Hi everyone. The following video is a recording of our 62nd Artist Feedback AMA session. This session was held in the MetaJungle Discord on January 19th, and we had our OG AMA hosts Mike Schmidt and Dan Hawk. During the session, our hosts reviewed and gave feedback on eight different NFT collections and editions, and we want to thank them for taking the time to review these collections, as well as everyone who submitted their art for review and everyone that was able to attend. We hope you find the suggestions and informations and tips and tricks um, all spoke about in this AMA as useful as we did. And with that, let's go on ahead and get into it. Yeah, before we go into any of the collections, um, just want to say I'm super excited. Uh, like to be back with Dan is 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 awesome. Uh, I love hearing Dan's voice because um, you know uh, we're I don't know this is probably like 62 or something AMA. I don't know where we're at right now, but. It's pretty deep. Uh, one day we'll be at 100. That'll be amazing. Uh, but uh, Dan is the original uh, original co-host of, of AMAs and original host, too. He's hosted uh, some of his own AMAs. He's the only other person, I believe, that has also uh, hosted the AMA. And um, we have a really great dynamic together, and I really love bouncing ideas uh, with him, especially when we have landscape stuff. We got a lot of landscape, actually, submissions today. Um, maybe sometimes the submissions come in uh, also based off the co-host, which which uh, makes sense. So uh, it should be a, a really fun and, uh, and an interesting AMA today. We have um, like this first one. We're going to be looking at like uh, moments and flow by uh, Daniel Badger. We haven't really seen an entry come in like this before, like where it's from a website and um, there's like links to um, Mint on Manifold. I think this is really uh, really cool. We'll get into that, but. Um, yeah, just wanted to welcome you, Dan, and um, it's really great to have you back. And uh, just wanted to know, like, how how things are going in life for you. Yeah, things are going great. Um, I'm, I I think we we've done one of these since I started working for Sony, but I think, but um, yeah, I'm I'm a uh, a field tech rep for Sony uh, Alpha, the camera division for Sony in the Pacific Northwest, uh, in the United States, and so I'm. I kind of am juggling that with uh, trying to be a photographer, uh, still doing some freelance work, um, and then of course hanging out in the digital art space with all of you uh, lovely people. So it's it's been good. We um, it's kind of a slow time of year for me right now, but I'm it, it, it's a lot of emails ramping up to uh, plan all kinds of cool events for the rest of the year. So that's kind of what I've been up to, um, and then I'm just I'm plugging away doing my own art, making new stuff. Um, I'll be dropping a, uh, a thread probably after we're done with this um, with some some new new kind of re-released work that I'm putting out. So uh, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm keeping busy. Very cool. So yeah, so your um, your job is involved in photography. you're uh, you're working on your passion in photography. Um, you're involved in the web three space. so sounds awesome, man. I think that's a uh, that's the dream. That's uh, yeah. I feel. I feel I'm trying to be fully immersed into all of this as well. Um, I think it's going to be a really, really amazing year this year, 2023, for uh, for Web three and for uh, for artists and um, for uh, curation um, and for for a lot of things. A lot of understanding about like what's. Uh, I think this year um, it's going to be a lot less wild west than uh, than last year, where you kind of could just you know, mint anything and no descriptions and this and that. And, and just like a lot of people just minting. And um, I think curation is, is going to take a, a, a key role here. I think, um, you know, things like, uh, um, you know, Foundation Worlds and any other uh, sites where, um, where you know, traditional, uh, are, uh, traditional curators are coming in uh, with a great eye for curation and can um, – allow some of the artists that are not necessarily very good at curation or maybe less interested in curation and they just want to focus on the art uh, to be able to find those artists and, and, and put together like sort of a 2D virtual gallery of, uh, of, of beautiful images. So I, I, I think that's going to be a big thing this year. So I'm, I'm super excited about uh, uh, curation this year and, and Web3 in general. So um, yeah, with that, I mean, what, what are you been up yeah. to, Mike? What, what's your what's um, your uh, what's your latest stuff? Um, news. well, what life I, news. <laughs> dude, yeah. Um, you know, I've been just working with Meta Jungle behind the scenes on a lot of things. Um, also, um, I had I bought a Rico GR camera during uh Rico Rico GR three uh X oh, camera yeah. 
during yeah. uh, Black Friday. And um, I've been playing around with that on the ferry quite a bit. Um, and it's, it's, it's really been interesting because it's such a small camera. It fits in the shirt pocket and I've uh, been able to take photos in a way that I, I can't necessarily take with a, a mirrorless or DSLR camera because I just, I just think people really take me that serious. I think they think they're, that I'm even more of a tourist um, on the boat. <laughs> Uh, and so I've been playing around a lot with that. I've actually um, actually also been um, really diving into playing around with AI from a photographer's uh, photographer's eye and seeing like um, what boundaries I could push through that and you know say uh, what I can say through it in a in a sort of a weird way about how um, this this idea of uh, <laughs> technology and, uh, and humans and, and it, you know, un uncanny, um, what is it? uncanny valley with Obscura Dow has kind of really kind of lit a fire under me with this, seeing the images that they've, uh, they've curated that are, that make you feel very uneasy about the technology. And I think I feel uneasy about the technology. And I think a lot of uh, artists in the space um, feel a bit uneasy about it as well. But I mean, uh, the tech is here. I, I, I love tech. So um, I'm going to explore it while it's here and, and tap out the bag and, and just see uh, to see what I could what I could do with it. So, uh, yeah, but, you know, I'm a photographer first uh, by day and, you know, by night I play I play around a little bit with that. So, I mean, that's uh, and that, you know, that's that's really what I've been up to. Um, today's a really rainy day. So maybe uh, after the AMA, I'll, I'll head out into the city uh, with my rain, rain gear and, and uh, try to make some night photos and experiment a little bit with, uh, with long exposure. Uh, that's, it's been one to experiment this year. So that's really it so, so far. Oh, that sounds great. Sounds great. Well, I, um, it's interesting what you'd said about the idea that we're kind of shifting away from Wild West in some ways. And I, I, it's weird because I feel like the the way people have been jumping around trying different, you know, like there was a little bit of the of FOMO with, oh yeah, I got to do an edition now because everybody's doing editions, or oh no, I, I gotta I gotta do a a big collection, a big giant collection because everybody's doing big giant collections. I think that's shifting, and I think everybody's just kind of locking into whatever they like to do, and it's becoming a little bit less of the selling point is not the format anymore it's way more it's becoming way more about the story of who you are as an artist and what, what how does this body of work speak yeah exactly and like what fits you like you know open editions is not going to fit everyone right that doesn't it doesn't have a, a large audience and um you know one of ones uh work for work for some people that can you know can can really find the collectors that are willing uh to buy a one of one there's you know, a lot of people out here that really love one of one. I mean, it's uh, for a collector. I think one of one sort of a collector's dream in some regard because they own the only one. There's something really beautiful about own, owning the only uh, slice of time out there. But, you know, additions are really interesting. And the fact that, um, you know, you get multiple people uh, to own uh, into a piece of your ecosystem. So I think it's just uh, figuring out... Um, what works for you and having intention and um you know minting minting with intention and um you know, curating curating with that that same uh intention yeah. uh, as well and alpha mentioned that today in a, a dm it reminded me so yeah a, a year of, uh, of of intention i think is a, a good way to sort of put it so yeah that's great yeah. sure so with that being said i think um probably dive in now i mean if you go into uh ama live chat uh, you could see that I, I posted all of the um, the collection names, uh, the artist name, and then the questions. Um, you might have a better uh, actually. I mean, I have it open on my I have it on my too. So, um, you know, we'll just do a regular format here. Yeah. Um, cool. Yeah. Cool. So uh, starting off, uh, this is Moments in Flow uh, by Daniel uh, Badger Photography. This, uh, these are uh, these are all editions. They're editions of ten, and they're minted on uh, manifold. Um, I love this new way of minting on uh, minting on manifold with our own contracts. I think it's really cool. I've never seen a format where someone links to their website, and you get the artist statement, and it's it's clean. Uh, you get the artist statement, and then you can um, open up 
the images that you like and, and uh, purchase uh, one of the editions. So let me read the artist statement. Um, when you hear that gentle sound of waves crashing against the shoreline, it's enough to make your soul feel at peace. The simplicity at this moment captures everything we love about life, adventure, and uncertainty. Joyfulness, when moments small or significant come around, all reminding us how beautiful our world can be. The crashing waves and breathtaking ocean views have always uh, given a sense of peace. As I capture these moments with my camera, it's as if, by photographing this, we are documenting our existence on Earth for future generations to see. I feel so fortunate through, that through photography, I can share what life and the ocean looks like in their rawest form, frozen in a moment. Each piece is available via editions of 10, and each batch contains five pieces. Um, and each batch will be in uh, staggered releases. Uh, if you own the set uh, within each batch, um, at least one each, um, you will be eligible for the opportunity to win a unique one of one uh, at the conclusion of all batches being released. It would be nice to know um, what your kind of like what your odds are on winning that uh, that one of one and how that's going to be played out. Other than that, I think this the artist statement is uh, really nice, really well well written. It kind of gives me an idea that this stuff is about like peace and solitude. Um, and, uh, and yeah, and so, uh, so yeah, so each piece is available via distance of 10. Each batch contains five pieces. Each batch will be staggered releases. Okay. So, um, so I guess this is the first five pieces, um, and then there will be staggered releases. Uh, I, I would, I would imagine after these ones, so like, let's, um, let's take a look through, uh, through some of these. So. I think uh, for me, um, freedom and endless might be uh, might be ones that really 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 stand out to me. I don't know. Let, let's take a look at freedom. <clears throat> the one thing I did notice is that there's like this uh, this border um, around the image, like in a way where if you had a picture in a frame, um, you could have it matted and it makes me wonder, does the NFT come with this border? And I'm guessing it does, be, right? So I, pulled, I just pulled up Moment and Flow. I pulled it up on OpenSea, and it does not have that border. Well, that's, um, yeah, so that's something that I, I would, I would include. Just a, that I might would be include. a manifold. I wonder if that's a manifold thing. It's not a manifold thing to have that border, because, I mean, I've, I've minted on manifolds. So... Um, I, I'm wondering if how it, I think that should probably then be like talked about in the description that like, that, you know, the, the NFT you receive is not going to have this border because maybe someone wants to receive it as is, or maybe somebody wants to actually receive it with that, with this border. So I think there needs to be like a little bit of transparency there on whether or not, uh, it has that, um, otherwise though, you know. I mean, I think this is a really beautiful shot. I like the tone of it. Um, I love how, you know, I love how like my eye starts at this rock here and it just sort of like leads me out, you know, it, like it sort of has this pattern that leads here, 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 then out into the sky. It's greatly layered with uh, foreground, midground, and uh, and background. And get a little, nice little, uh, little wave, a crest of a wave happening uh, out there. And so, um, yeah, I would love to hear your thoughts on, on some of that, Ben. Yeah. Well, and while you were talking, I was, I was looking, I think, I wonder if it's because I wonder, I don't remember there being some, I'm just talking about that background. I don't remember there being an option for that in Manifold. I'm, I pulled up my own, one of my own. Um, and I'm wondering if it's because the preview photo is a lower res. Uh -huh. Something like that. So anyway. Um, okay, so kind of my, my thoughts, and I'll, I will um, say that Daniel's other pieces, I'm looking at a different one of the other pieces, uh, the one that's called Truth, um, it has that same kind of background, so I don't know um, what's going on there. Um, it looks like the format is maybe like a 4x5 or 3x4, so maybe that's doing it, who knows. In terms of the, the work itself, what I, um, what I really like is I feel like there's a 
Um, I like the, I like that artist statement, like you said. Um, I feel like there is a cohesiveness to all of these pieces that that really work for me. I think uh, maybe my favorite is Truth because I like the color. That's why I had it pulled up. Um, I like that. Um, I love that deep uh, aqua color in the waves, and then that it's it's so different in the sky as well. Um, mm-hmm. It just it's a it's a really appealing look to me, and I love that little that little uh, puddle, that little little tiny uh, uh, right here puddle. on the rock. Yeah, it just kind of draws my eye right into it. Um, I'm kind of a sucker for the seascapes with a with a prominent foreground with some, like a big rock or something right in the foreground. So I really like emotion as well for that same reason. Um, it has the same same kind of foreground vibe. What um. In terms of the art, I mean, this is great. Daniel is a really great photographer. He makes some really beautiful work. Um, he's somebody that I've chatted with quite a bit in, uh, in you know, Twitter uh, groups um, and, and just on Twitter in general. Um, he's really passionate about what he makes. Um, he's been doing this for a while. He's kind of kind of OG. He's been around and um, I know had uh, uh, Cactux. Vince collected some of his work early on last year. So I know that I know he's been around. His name is well known. Uh, I believe um, I think you know he's got some other big collectors that also own his work. So he's been he's been doing this for a while, and uh, you know I think the, the work is definitely there. The, the the work is definitely high quality. Sure. Uh, I think all the works. Are... Go ahead. Yeah, if I were gonna if I were gonna pick at anything here, um, I think there's recently i've kind of heard a few different collectors and and artists that have talked a bit about making things complicated <clears throat> and so my if i had one little bit bit of feedback i think you kind of hit on it right at the beginning the idea that if the idea of the batches and the stagger release and the chances of winning i think it's better and i had somebody tell me this exact same thing it's better to be clear up front <clears throat> about what is it, you know, what is the what is the setup? How does this work? Um, in other words, if I buy all five from this from this batch, do I get a one of one for sure, or am I entered in a drawing? Um, and then one other question in here: It looks like none of those one of ones will be released until all of the staggered release, bat- all the batches have been released. But I don't know how many batches are going to be released here. Exactly. As an artist, I get why you wouldn't release that because it's hard. You know, I think we all want to be a little careful. We don't want to, I don't want to right from the get-go say, I'm doing 10 batches. Well, now you've committed yourself to 50 images. Um, but if the first few batches don't do well, like you're, gonna, you're not going to want to continue. So I, I get that. And what I would probably do is maybe think about releasing the one of one when the batch sells out. Or when, or, or when somebody buys all five, and if somebody's already bought all five, maybe think about: Are you ready to just really start releasing that one of one to those people? That makes sense. Like a lot of transparency there, because like I yeah. also like, because I have no idea. Like if I, if I were to buy five of these, um, what are my chances? Right. Like uh, yeah. I think I think if people knew their chances, they'd be more much more apt to. To purchase all five i mean i think all five are, are beautiful too so it's like yeah. like you said the work is there so it's like just um being a little bit more clear uh, about um about that so like let's take a look at you know um the, i guess the prices and the so um this one hasn't it's, there's only been one minted from this one it's the one that you really like so 0.04 i think the pricing is is um is really fair, right? Um, so, and and I think the the addition size is is really good too. Like it's pretty limited. Uh, I like ten. Ten is cool. Um, if you sell ten, you get zero point four ETH, um, and that's pretty nice. I think you're happy with that. I think that um, that that's that's really really good. Um, but if we look at the start date, I mean, this came out in October, um, October third. So you know, it's, uh, it's been October, November, December. January, we will be approaching like four and a half months. Um, and it hasn't, it only sold one here. Um, let's take a look at Which some of the other. Too, because did you pull up Freedom? Because Freedom is sold out. Is it? Yeah. Well, um, it, it's not though, because 
it's, it only says for well, a minute. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. When you go sorry. to open, yeah, yeah, you go yeah, to open C, yeah, <laughs> I was looking at C. You're when right. When you right. go to open C, I don't understand. The, uh, oh, because oh yeah, so five is owners. It only, yeah, it only shows the ones that are minted. It it doesn't know. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, okay, so five of freedom. Um, which I don't know if there's a reason for that because like for me personally, I'm mean, like, I like freedom. I think it's great. Um, I, it's not even, it's not the strongest one to me. Um, I, like I said, I think there's a couple others that are a little stronger to my eye, but, um, you know, here, I guess if, if I had to give, here's what I'm curious about and Daniel's not here. I will just tell you Daniel's in is he's probably not awake yet. He's in Australia. <laughs> so Jeez. he enters, <laughs> enters the group chats, uh, sometime midday usually, what I what I am curious about is I, what, as much as I love the idea of going to the website, um, I just I don't know what that how are collectors seeing that are they do they like that um, is that a is that the only way that people find them um, are you you know Daniel are you only sending people to the website or are you also sending people to the manifold um, minting site? And how, how I want to know how you're promoting that, because I I know that there's I've I've wanted to do the same thing I've I've been building out my website and I've got some links built in there back to Web three, but I I I understand that there are some collectors who are just not going to click a link that is not Linktree or Manifold or OpenSea. They're, if it's not Web three native, they're not clicking the link. That's a great point. Uh, that's a great point that I didn't consider. But if you go to Manifold's site, will we only be able to see one of these at a time, or can we see them as a as a collection of them? How does that work? Yeah, because I, I I'm not too familiar. I'm gonna, I'm gonna look and see. Um, I don't know that there's. I'm looking at his stuff right now, and if I click on a link, any of the links that go that are that are kind of directed towards Daniel, they take you to Etherscan or to Twitter. So there's, I don't think there's a way to see his. Well, let me let me try this. Moments truth. I'm gonna I'm gonna fiddle with the the URL. What happens if I just do moments? That doesn't go the right place. Okay, so yeah, I think it might be that, like, because you don't really see many people that have more than one edition on Manifold out at the same time. I think right. this is the first time that I've seen someone create like a collection of additions on Manifold. So his his only option to market this for people to see all five without having to make separate posts for five different ones with five different links or one post with because you can't even put five images into a post on Twitter anyway either. You'd have to put yeah. four yeah, four links. Bread. Yeah, that would be the only other way that he can do that. I mean, yeah. So, but but I, I see what you're saying about how some people don't want to go to websites that are non-native to Web three. So, yeah, it, it makes me think. Just it, that might be a way to get creative with this. Uh, for for Daniel to get creative would be to say, okay, I, I here's the thing. I love the website idea. So how do you get around that? And I don't know if that's I don't know if that is a barrier or not. Like I, I don't know. He's not. He hasn't given us that, that particular feedback. But um, that would well, be something to consider. Let's take a look at the Twitter real quick. Uh, his Twitter. Um, I'll just kind of get an idea. Pin tweet. Small replay. Here's a small recap on the additions I do have available to you. All these pieces are minted um, using Manifold. I look forward to joining. Uh, your galleries and collections. Let's just click on this. So, so he has more minted on. Uh, it's interesting. Yeah. He starts. He starts with this image when this is a collection of images. Like I would have probably started with my collection of images before this one. Um, and I don't. I don't think I actually would have put all these in one post either. Uh, but so this is Open C. This is Open C, and they're all fantastic images. Has a great, great, great artist. Yeah, but that this pin tweet I think is the most attractive pin tweet to bring someone in. I would have at least had an image in the original pin tweet to kind of grab eyes and bring up these, these 
you know the views on this and 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 some more uh, more engagement. I'm going to retweet it out, but um, then underneath this, I mean, like maybe this should be like the pin tweet. Maybe the pin tweet should be about moments and flow right now, just because right. it's been out for three months. No, it's been out for four plus months, and it's not moving in the way that I think he, uh, that he probably wants it to be moving. So. I would keep the focus on moments and flow. Uh, so this to me would be my, um, this part here would be my pin tweet, but I would also probably add like, if, you know, if you don't want to um, go to my website to see the work, um, you know, there's see? links, links below. Is someone here? Who's that? <laughs> I heard someone yell G. <laughs> anyway, um, yeah, I, I would I'd focus. I, the only person on. unmuted is between one of us. Sabote. So maybe it's Sabote. Yeah, so I agree. I agree with you. Yeah, I agree with you, Mike, on this one. I I would I would revamp that, and I, I guess Daniel here, here's kind of my, my my feedback just from a marketing standpoint. What I what I think would be helpful, and I. I've said this to a lot of people on on these AMAs, and I've said it outside of here too. I, you know, if you you need to focus on something, and you need to tell the story, and it help it's helpful to go and tell the story of each of these pieces, uh, one one at a time. And I would probably not use the messaging that's quite the um, the if you don't want to go to a link. I would say here are these pieces are all available to Midtown Manifold. If you'd like to see them all in one place and see my artist statement, you can see those all on my website and put the whole URL there, not some kind, not, not any kind of weird obscure link, but put the whole URL. Yeah, and just say, you know, this is a place you can see the whole thing if you'd like. Yeah, that's a much better way of phrasing it. I always, I always proofread yeah. stuff before I tweet them out. Uh, but yeah, that, that would be but the much better way to phrase I also, that. If you think about um, just knowing a little bit of Daniel's, you know what what he's talked about in 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 the space and what he's talked about on Twitter, I I really believe it does it will suit you well and probably, you know I don't know if it'll be more successful but I but I I like the idea of a more coherent message, and to focus on these pieces and how they all fit together and and to talk about each of them individually and i know you've already done some of that um but that's that's the thing to to think about is as an artist what are you sharing what is your message um yeah like a little tweet storm on and, a little and... sorry dan yeah like a little tweet storm on moments and flow and then have like each little uh each different tweet have like one of them has truth one of them has oblivion then a little bit about that moment, what it was like to get out there, what it was like to take that um, and stuff like that. And have that like as the pin tweet, like the pin tweet being like a collage, the first the first part of the pin tweet being a collage of them and talking about it a little bit. And then saying like, you know, um, putting like an arrow or, or putting like um, one of seven, like, you know, one, one of seven pages within this tweet. And then each page sort of talks about a different image yeah. that, you know, that might bring in some more interest and have more people retweeting it out and stuff like that. I think that would be a better way of marketing it that way. And, you know, of course, just we're talking about it in spaces, uh, uh, getting a little, uh, some eyes on it here in the AMA is, is good too. So you have some questions. Um, I have the questions here. Um, has everything been set, uh, has everything been set up in a good way? Um, I think we talked about that. Um, I have these minted via Manifold and can be minted uh, can be minted off my website. Um, this is one of the larger projects I've created, and eventually it has approximately 25 pieces planned. I do struggle with marketing and getting eyes on this. So I think we answered. Actually, I didn't even I didn't even read these questions first. I usually kind of just go with it while I'm in the AMA because I, I like to talk about the work before I even look at the questions. I think we hit on that actually. I think we hit on exactly what he needed um, to hear and, and needed to know. So, um, you have anything else then? Because I, I don't, I don't have anything yeah, else. I, I think the work's I, great. Right? I think the work's great. No. 
no, I think that I think that's that's all I've got. Um, you know, Daniel, good work. Um, and I think it really comes down to like almost every one of us. I because I I feel the same way. I feel like I have work that I I love it. I just wish I could get people to see it. And I I think I have to take my own advice here. And it's I'm just telling you I'm I'm literally working on a thread myself, telling a story about work, because I think that that's the way that you do this. And also I I'll say one more thing. You know, Mike mentioned four months. Um, I think it's good for us to begin to, as the market changes, as the number of artists and the and the and the distinctive artists that are here change, it's good to realize that the the idea of selling out the all of these things, you might want to rethink that. You might want to kind of remap that in your brain. What is it going to look like for you to feel successful? Um, <clears throat> What is a way for you to release work that feels sustainable? Um, are there ways that you can have small wins, um, even if the big wins aren't always happening? I think those are the kinds of things as artists we should be considering. How do you do something that's sustainable for the next few years, not for the, not for the next two months? Yeah, absolutely. And like, not you know, um, you know, not not every artist uh, is worried about whether or not it sells out quickly. Some are. I mean, it does create momentum. Um, good idea to know, um, you know, your demand, obviously. Um, I'm glad he didn't mint them as open editions because, um, you know, uh, someone would have got truth or um, <laughs> uh, they would have had a one of one for 0 0.04, you know. Um, so that's the thing with open editions is that, like, if you don't know your demand and you have a timer on it and um, no one really buys it, and then someone comes in at the end and swoops up one and your price was like 0 0.02, they literally just took a, you know, a, a, like a one of one off of your hands that might be one of your best pieces for like obviously sub 80 revenue dollars or right. something, right? So that's yep. the risk there. And if that happens, then, um, if you want to sell a piece on super rare foundation or wherever it might be for one ETH, um, someone might question, well, why would I purchase something from one ETH? If this artist has something that they just sold of similar quality for 0 0.02 as a one of one. So there's, there's risks that come with, uh, with, with doing open editions. I think, um, I think limited edition is, uh, a, the better option for 90% of the people. I think even myself, limited edition, especially like, I, I think, I think people that do really well with open editions, like have people that like, they have more demand than like even supply, like in the, in, in the ecosystem, like, you know, there's just like, like, um, what's his name? Um, uh, Sicilian kiss like Guido and, uh, you know, and some of those artists that just people are DMing them all day when you're coming out with the next thing, like an open edition for them can do really, really well and pull in five or six ETH just off of an open edition. But yeah. um, for the majority of us, uh, I think a limited edition is the way to go. That doesn't have a time limit on it that we can sort of focus on and we don't have to worry about running out. I do have an open edition running because I, you know, I, I always have to experiment. Um, and if it, if it, if it, uh, if it ended now with 22 minutes, I would, I would be happy, but like, you know, I'd be happier if it got more. So uh, it's it's all it's all a learning uh, it's all a learning curve. It's a, it's very hard right now to get eyes on uh, on work, but the market is picking up. So there is that. But uh, I'm going to move on to the next question, unless you have anything else here, Dan. No, I think that's it. Cool, man. All right. Um, next, uh, it's not a collection, but the uh, the next uh, limited edition of 19 uh, is called. C-130J, and I've actually flown on uh, these planes uh, in the U.S. Coast Guard. Uh, it's called Facing the Storm, and this is by uh, Arajit Mandal. And cool. uh, Yeah, and so uh, I'll read the statement real quick. The Lockheed Martin C-130J Super Hercules is a four-engine turboprop military transport aircraft. More than 500 of these mechanical beasts serve in around 25 air forces around the world. Jesus, it's a very popular plane. Um, uh, Indian Air Force operates 12 of these flying machines. This photograph is of an Indian Air Force's C-130J taken in my city, uh, uh, Durgapur, West uh, Bengal, during the monsoon season of 2019. Dark clouds along the sunset create, create uh, col sunset colors creates uh, the beautiful frame. 
regular train training stories uh, by these machines are quite common here, considering my city's proximity uh, to uh, uh, Panagar Air Force Base of IAF, home base of IAF C-130Js. Zooming in on the photograph clearly shows the serial number of the aircraft in its tail fin and below the wing. Um, I love that artist statement. That's really cool. Uh, gives us a, a really cool history on the C-130. I've been on these planes. Really cool. Um, but I didn't know that there was, um, you know, more, more than 500 of them, uh, serving in 25 different air forces across the world. It's pretty cool that he has, um, has some of these around him where he lives because there's a, there's a base where they conduct training. Um, I think it's really cool that he got the shot during the monsoon because it's, uh, it's super surreal. Um, it looks like it's going into the damn storm, like, and it's, the storm is just, you know, it's, it's just it's just tremendous looking um yeah. even like yeah right it's it's a, it's a really cool uh image um one more thing is just a, it says zooming in on the photograph clearly shows the serial number i will say that i've i've zoomed in and um uh oh it's so mike uh, am i doing it wrong yeah manifold gives really crummy uh um high res so if you pull it up on open sea you can zoom go. in yeah it's super super clear and, and nice Oh, I see. Okay, cool. <clears throat> How do you go about zooming in on OpenSea? I'm using the plus and minus on my keyboard. Because you're on a you're on a uh, <laughs> you're on a PC, right? Yeah, I'm a jerk. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I I just pull it up and then pinch to zoom on my trackpad. But cool. Well, I mean, we can see that you know the resolution actually is really good on here. And it's from Manifold that we're not able to do that. Uh, with that being said, I mean, I really love the image. Um, before we get into talking about, like, the price and the number of editions, uh, just, uh, Dan. Yeah, this is this is a cool shot. Um, it kind of reminds me a little bit of, like, um, of Dave, Dave Markle, Alpine Lifer. You remember when we reviewed his stuff yes. last summer? Yeah, uh, or... it reminded me exactly of that when, the, when they were putting the fires out, the water. Yeah. Yeah, Dave's a friend, and and we I chat with him all the time, and I own a couple pieces of his. Uh, one of them I think is 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 it's from that same series. But this is cool. I like I love the man. I I love the serious like darkness of those clouds. I think it's really really cool. Um, I like it a lot. I, I think um, if there was anything. And, and and this is you know I'm getting nitpicky here, but this is just an artist kind of thing. I would maybe consider cropping this down to like a six by seven or maybe four by five, and cutting off a little bit of the left hand side, just mm -hmm. to get it uh, to make it a little bit tighter. That would be kind of my my only thought, um, just you know artistically. But it's such a cool it's just a cool image. And there's all that being said there's interesting things happening all over the photo so maybe maybe not crop in that's just what i would probably do yeah just taking a taking a look here go ahead dan uh, I, did you what's yeah that? yeah oh, no, i don't know if you cut off or not <clears throat> no i i can still hear you um yeah so that's kind of my that's that's kind of how i feel about the image um it's it is very different and, and he did ask about this um, in his uh, in his questions. Um, he said, "I'm a multi-genre photographer. Will it be okay if my marketplace profile have photographs from different genre of off course in different collections? How do I fit in my black and white photographs in the profile?" Um, so that's kind of um, interesting. Yeah. Before I even answer that question, though, I just, just want to say he's, he's he's kicking ass here on this limited edition because. Yeah. Um, it came out on uh, on the twelfth, and it's only the nineteenth, um, and he's already sold eight. Um, so that's 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 really good. So I mean, his um, I think a lot of it has to do with you know the photograph is really great, but probably his uh, his, his audience um, as well as um, if I click this, does it bring me to his Twitter? No, that's EtherScan. Um, that's Twitter, I think. Yeah, and I mean, he's got it right up here. Um, see, this is a, this is this is interesting. So you got 
multi-genre, multi-award winning photographer from India, Foundation Open Sky Object. Gives an idea of some of the work uh, that he's doing. Original photo retweeted. Awesome. Uh, yeah, I think I think that's uh, it's got a lot of uh, it's got a lot of sales so far. That's that's uh, that's awesome. So going to that question that you uh, uh, that you were talking about, um, let me just take a look at this again. Um, I'm a multi-genre photographer. Will it be okay if my marketplace profile? What does that mean, marketplace profile? Like, like, which marketplace? I think it depends on which marketplace too. But um, have photographs from different genres, of course, in different collections. How do I fit my black and white photographs in the profile? Um, how I go? How would I go about answering that? Um, you know, if I could start over, um, I probably <laughs> if I could start over everything, which you know I can't obviously because it's on the blockchain. I mean, I would, um, ugh, I would have focused myself more on uh, the genre that I know that I'm like best at and that um, I'm most kind of fully immersed in when I'm shooting it and I'm most passionate about. I probably would have done something like that and I would have kept my collections with the feeling that felt kind of similar even to my other work. I mean, I, I don't, I don't, I don't think it's not okay to, to, uh, to have um, different genres of work, but I don't know if I would have multiple different genres minted at the same time and stuff that would be hard to market. Um, for me to tell someone, no, you should not have that. And you should just focus on a specific style and have a signature. I don't think that's right either because um, I think it's really important to experiment. I, I think experimenting in other genres sometimes makes you better at your genre when you come back to it because you can stare at things. Like, you know, like I experiment with abstract sometimes, like simple abstract stuff when I'm on vacations, like, or, or whatever on my phone. And then when I, when I go back to photographing, let's say on the boat, like the ferry or, or like street style, I pay more attention to the geometry actually. Um, and the symmetry. So I think it's good to explore different genres and stuff. But if it if it if it looks if it looks like all the different folders and genres are from different artists, I think then you start to have a bit of a problem there because you really remove your signature. How do you feel, Dan? You know, it's man, that's such a weird uh, balance to try to figure out. I think every every artist kind of struggles with the same thing. Like that's you know, if I pull up my own profile i was just asking some some friends that i trust a couple days ago hey do i have too much different stuff out there because <laughs> i mean even I, I i think even if i'm giving advice here i'll just tell you that that's something i struggle with too it's something that i don't i don't fully not fully comfortable with it i think f mine is primarily um landscape based uh photography but you know i tried doing some street and it, honestly it just didn't do all that well um and I've kind of removed it from, from my profile. When he talks about the idea of your profile, I, I actually have, um, I have his, uh, his main OpenSea profile opened. And it's, it's vast, I mean, it's almost all wildlife and insects and, you know, natural scenes. Um, so it's, um, I don't think it, hurts to broaden things out but i think like we were telling dan in the first daniel in the first one i think it really makes sense to just make sure that you're telling a compelling story about yourself um telling about who you are what you do um and if as long as you're doing that i think you're going to be fine it's you can you can you can talk about the other work you can talk about hey i've got some abstracts hey i've got some urban you know architecture i've got some different things and as long as you present each of those stories well, um, I think you'll be okay. I think where you run into problems is when you're trying to promote three or four projects that are really different at the same time. And so that would be the one thing I would maybe say is it is really helpful to make sure your messaging is is focused at pretty much at all times. And it doesn't mean you can't change your focus, but make sure you're focused. And a, a good example of a, a thought process on this is that, um, you know, we're always talking about the Twitter algorithm and, and, and how, you know, how we battle that or get through or, 
how people find us. And I think one of the things that's important for you to understand as an artist, and this is true for every one of us, if you talk about insects a lot because you're focused on insects, people are going, that's going, that's going to be the thing that you, why you show up and how you show up. If you start changing what you're talking about and you start talking about airplanes, well, what will happen is the people who have you in their feed because they like insects, you're not going to show up in their feed when you start talking about other stuff. When you start putting other kinds of imagery and other kinds of phrases in your in your tweets. So just keep that in mind that in, in large part how you talk is going to determine who sees you. And, and so if you're talking about a lot of random stuff all the time, you may not get quite as focused of an audience. Yeah, I think that's really well said. I'm looking through a lot of um, a lot of the the stuff here, and if I just kind of scroll through the um, the, the created parts, uh, stuff that he's created, I mean, I think it seems it, it seems you know, like I feel a signature to it, you know. Yep. Until I get until I get to the end, and there's the the sort of the C the C one thirty one doesn't feel like the same photographer, but it is a it, it is an addition. Um, so it's, it's okay. a bit different. I yeah, it, it it doesn't hurt him. I don't think I don't I don't think it's hurting you. Um, I think one thing I will say though is like most of these collections, like for the most part, like either have um, no volume, like no sales, or um, you know, like if if well, some of them are on foundation stuff, but yeah, yeah like yeah. um, if you have like a lot of different uh different collections out and there's just ones that just haven't moved at all like you can imagine unseed world must have moved some stuff right but it's in a zero eth so there's um there's nothing moved in this collection that your supply is really high but your demand is not high so like i'm not telling you what to do but like what i would do like if it was me is like especially on like lazy minted sites like OpenSea, I would just remove them and I would just put them in like, I would just put them in a folder. Like I would put Unseen World if it hasn't moved anything or I don't know, Wildlife Through My Lens has moved anything. Um, maybe a couple, but like the, the, the collections that haven't moved anything, I would probably just un, unmint them for now and put them in a folder and say, this is great work. Let me wait until my... Um, my demand catches up to my supply and like really re-release some of that stuff. Right. Um, my, going back, I, I literally have done exactly that. I've done exactly that. I went through and I, I full on deleted multiple collections from my OpenSea because they didn't have enough volume. And in a couple of cases, I just said, Hey, you know what? I'm going to grab these pieces. I'm deleting them off OpenSea and I reminted them on Manifold and put them in a different collection. Really smart. I think that's a really good way to do it because like, um, you know, this is the blockchain and like, once we mint things, it's like, it's really hard to go back and, and well, once we mint things and they sell, it's hard to go back on something that we might consider a mistake. So like anyone out there that's listening right now, if you have stuff that like really hasn't moved and you don't have the demand for it, maybe just, maybe just, you know, unmint it, you know, unmint it for now. Um, or or maybe maybe mint having it minted is okay but but listed with prices and stuff i don't know you know i i'd, I'd rather have like I'd, I'd rather have less out there to be honest and and you know it, having it look like my my uh i have a, a good demand than to have a lot of stuff and say oh well i don't know because like you know some collectors are going to look and say oh well i don't know if there's like long-term potential here if they're the type of investors that invest to you know, try to flip a profit later on. If they just like beautiful work, they'll probably still collect it, you know. Um, but, you know, going back to what he said about what he said about um, multi-genre photographer and being able to like kind of make it feel cohesive. I mean, I think you're doing a really good job at that, Dan, because uh, if you look at like your landscape work, uh, which are like, you know, traditional style landscapes, and then you look at your like your cracked floors the cracked uh the pavements that are cracked in the sand and stuff like that it doesn't feel like it's from a different photographer but it is a different genre i mean it's 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 uh it's it's abstract minimalism but it's um it's also part of a landscape so it's like uh i think there are ways of doing it i think that that's a good example 
there. And I think there's many people doing different things uh, that are that are a good are a good example of that as well. So um, yeah. yet, yet, is that a, yet another question, right? Is it like, I love to take experimental photos, especially with macro, like using UV light, et cetera. The results are to my liking, but in some cases it looks like digital art. If I mint them, will it hamper my profile? Um, some cases it looks like digital art. I mean, if it's, I think when it, I don't think that he means, I don't think he means digital photography when he says that. I think he means yeah. digital I, art. Um, I think he's thinking of stuff that's maybe a little more along the lines of the new AI kinds of stuff that's happening or, or, um, but or they're digital. photos though. They're yeah, photos. Or, yeah. yeah. Well, my, my, this is something that I've kind of wrestled with a little bit. I've actually kind of considered having a completely separate wallet and different profile for some other work that I've fiddled with. I haven't done that, done it, but I do know there's people who do, and there's people who are even sneaky about it. <laughs> like they're, they create digital art under a different name. And yeah, you know, I mean, you, you could do that. Right. But then people don't know who you are on that other account. So they're less likely to purchase from you. Um, and then you got to manage two accounts. I mean, I mean, I can tell you what I've done recently is that like, if I create something in AI, it's under the artist's name of spatial. But if I create photography, it's under the name of Mike Schmidt. And therefore, I really don't have to change my account. Yeah. Um, and I can experiment in two different two different areas. And I also don't mint um, also don't mint stuff in AI like in a, the same place as I kind of like mint my photography to confuse right. um, yeah. people. And for the most part, I just entered into contests with with the people that are already curating AI type stuff because I, sure. I enjoy doing it. But I just do it under the guise of another name uh, of, of of my sort of my um, yeah my my Twitter DNS. I like it. I like it. Well, I feel like the, 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 we'll put it this way: there's some really great work here. Um, you, you may be onto something there with the idea that you know perhaps there's a split in what looks you know what's popular what's not um what what is working and what's not and i think what we've tried to give you is some pretty good advice on the idea that maybe you have a little bit too much work out there and maybe calling this down a bit and being more careful about what you release may be a good idea and here's a, a, what i'll if I'm put a really positive spin on this, it's not a spin, but a, a, the positive to this is I'm looking at the macro shots and some of these macro shots are absolutely gorgeous. And it's a shame that they're sitting in a, in a collection where nobody's buying them. So what I think m might be good would be to maybe delete the collection and pause this and come back to it when you have a bit a more of an audience for this stuff. Um, that's just kind of my thought. I'm also looking at these and, and these are, they're super cheap. And I feel like they're much higher quality images than the prices you have on them. So I think these deserve more attention. They deserve more promotion, more marketing than, um, than they're getting. And I think that might be part of the problem. Yeah, I completely agree. I don't have anything to add to that, actually. This is well said. It's just kind of along the lines of what I'm saying. It's like, you know, um, if it's lazy minted and you don't have to pay any money to, uh, to take it away for now, Take it away for now and wait for the market to pick up. Or take it away for now. And wait to wait for your demand to pick up. Um, yeah. Then, then release it. You know. Um, you, ready, you ready to move on? Yeah, absolutely. Cool. Uh, next collection. Um, this is a collection of two images. Um, magical uh, monochromes. This is by uh, Gurav Rai, and he's just looking for feedback on the photographs. No questions as such. Just overall feedback on the collection. Um, Cool. Uh, let's look at the description. Uh, a set of vibrant and lively monochrome photographs depicting aspects of life. That's very vague. Um, so, you know, I, I, I would definitely want, you know, this is the thing I, I, I begin to, uh, to really recognize over and over with monochrome. That just because you shoot in black and white doesn't mean that everything fits into a collection in bl that's black and white. It's like, if, if it were that black and white, then you know, it would be a lot less dimension to other aspects that come into play when it comes to uh, curation and storytelling. So right. um, I think that this description is sort of a way to allow uh, the artist to post 
a lot of different types of black and white photograph into the same collection. But I would focus more on black and white photographs that make sense to each other in black and white. Um, and then talk about that here. Like, um, are you shooting black and white because you like the battle between um, dark and light and what the battle between dark and light means and the philosophy behind the battle between dark and light and how black and white is a completely different way of seeing the world than, uh, than color is because you aren't focusing on color, but you're focusing more on shapes and geometry and light shadow hearing something about something like that in the description and then seeing uh, it played out like that through photographs would be really interesting. Um, with that said, yeah, so description like needs help. Uh, before we get onto the photos, um, the one thing I like about, uh, really like about Foundation is it provides like a website style look. And um, I think that uh, the, the banner is just like a little too, um, uh, I think you have, spice, you could spice it up a bit, you know? I also don't like how magical monochrome's text goes over the monochromes that you can't read right. it here. Right. So, so um, you know, like I, I would try to find a way to make this banner like really beautiful. Cause like, like if it was your website, would you have it like this? Would you have this portion overlapping this? Like think about it in terms of that, like every little detail counts. Uh, when a collector comes into your your uh, your profile to look at your work, every detail counts. You want them to be wowed by the banner. You want them to be wowed by the photograph. So um, this is where they start. This is the first impression. It's just a little dull for me, right? I would I would I'd pump that up again a, a bit. And then also like you know, like these like light shadow palm tree type type pieces coming down here, and it feels like it's like more going to be about a jungle collection or something. Just doesn't make sense and it just feels like you kind of pulled like um i don't know, like a stock banner gray banner thing but i would i'd get with like uh someone who's um who works really well with graphic design and and say hey i'm looking for something for my you know thing and maybe you guys can work something out or maybe can you know just figure out a way to to put a put an image in here that looks really really cool with it um agree with that yeah. dan i i would i totally agree i would just stick with a photo like i don't <clears throat> i feel like when people try to get really complicated with I, I you know putting in the like moving um gif type things in open sea was a thing for a while i feel like foundation works a lot better if you just choose <clears throat> a really high quality photo to go there <clears throat> yeah i'm really digging foundation i'm really really <clears throat> digging foundation and i'm seeing a lot of collectors collecting on foundation i'm seeing a lot of new artwork being listed on there and uh almost to the point where i'm like is foundation becoming like sort of a um competition super in a way it, it feels that way for me at least i mean i feel yeah. like a lot of people are choosing foundation right now and it's like they just came out of nowhere because i know you know um maybe a half a year ago people were just like oh i don't use foundation it's you know there's too much like you know it's just i mean if they made it in a way where you could scroll through the images like you put on sloika too i mean that would be it that would be fantastic but yeah I, I i think that they're uh doing some really interesting things lately and one of them is being able to have a nice web page type layout so take advantage of what their platform is is good for so let's go into the images yeah um, well and i was just going to say before we do that i'm i am almost completely on foundation myself like i just i really prefer the way they do things i mean i still do some addition things and i've still done some you know some manifold mint type things but i really i really prefer the way it's presented and I, the big reason why for me is because i'm they work it works really well pretty seamlessly with manifold so that's i can mint my stuff like it shows up there it's organized well i like the way it's presented um so that being said, I, I feel like that, like you said, that top uh, banner doesn't work uh, really well. Uh, let's get into the pictures though a little bit. Um, I completely agree with exactly what you said, Mike. Black and white is not a, is not a collection type. It really shouldn't be. Um, <clears throat> I mean, I think that there's times where it could, but I think for the most part, you that's just not a. It doesn't lean in. It doesn't work for me. And when I pull up these two images side by side. Um, I would not guess that they were part of the same collection because I don't True. see what they have in common. I agree. 
Um, uh, and also, the, they just don't even look similar. So the aesthetic of the um, of the first one, Parallel World, like I actually really like that aesthetic. It's um, I think it's a really well done image in many ways, <clears throat> and it feels artistic and yet somewhat documentary. Um, the other photo really it's called dog squad to me this really is i mean it's not a bad photo it's actually really a really nice image and it's a storytelling image that feels far more editorial the other one feels artistic this one feels editorial yeah it does uh, artistic the first one feels artistic in a way of where it's 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 more artistically documentary where this feels a bit more strictly documentary in a way yeah. Um, they, they just don't I, exactly. It, it is fine. Yeah. Um, I I also I also would would prefer to like see more images. Like you know, like it would be nice to see um four to eight images or four to six images, so we could be like, oh well, you know, parallel world actually works well with like these the other three images, and I think a collection of four with parallel parallel world would work really great or like you know dog squad makes a lot of sense with you know so and so um and so to just have two images to speak off of it's a little bit difficult to gauge you know i, I have to see what other you know like and why don't we do that like let's um let's see what let's see some more <laughs> i'm saying like let's go to like um like instagram you know like uh instagram Right. Um, and but I mean, I, and we're not going to know what's mint. Well, I know some of these are minted. Actually, this is minted. I, I love this image. That's minted. Um, this is minted. Obviously, that's the one we're talking about. This shot's minted. But um, maybe there's some other stuff in here that's that's not minted. That's interesting. Go through. Um, doesn't look like for the most part they shoot too much in black and white and like this wouldn't really fit into either the genre of either of those i don't think this would either but just to get an idea right I don't like this shot. This is this is this is really interestingly composed. I like how none of the people overlap. I like all the boats. I was gonna say this looks like Varanasi at Gots, and it is Varanasi twenty twenty. Mm -hmm. um, right. It's beautiful, but I don't think you could put that in black and white when it's so nice and <laughs> when it's so nice in uh, in that color. I like this shot. This is nice. The smoke coming out the man's hand framing is really nice um, yeah i mean you know sometimes it just takes going into uh this is kind of a cool shot too kind of going mm -hmm. into i like that yeah one. right like the composition um they're between the two trees the silhouettes nice is the hand gesture the you know the the twig um kind of juxtaposing the the um oh wow is that a twig or is that a makeshift fishing pole i think that's a ma maybe a makeshift fishing pole juxtaposing like this um this fishing pole that looks like it could be a, a bought fishing pole or maybe it's makeshift too in a, in a better better fashion but it's a nice shot but um still it's still hard for me to uh, find a cohesive now this is starting to look a little more cohesive when you look at something like this oh, and then like cool. right yeah like that's different, right? Um, I mean, I think I might like it to have like a little bit contrast or sharpness. I don't know, but I think it's beautiful, uh, really beautiful. Like how how this island points to the people here. The splash creates kind of a circle around them. There's, it's, it's yeah, it's yeah. I know you like that, Dan. It's got that sort of um, taken from above and textured feel, right? Yep. Well, and I think I think what kind of what we're getting at here is that if you dig in a little bit, the the, the art you've got more work here that that would fit, 
And I think what I would probably lean into is there's nothing wrong with it being monochrome. Like that's the monochrome's cool. Oh, those there's there's some other good ones there. But the biggest thing I would lean into is what is the what is the cohesive story aside from that it's black and white? Yeah, what's the theme? Exactly. Yeah. Um, because I think that that helps you that'll help you to connect with people in a way that's more powerful. Um, cause I, and I'll just tell you, I flat out, I'm not really a black and white is not really my thing. Um, I, I don't mind it. And every, and every once in a while I will shoot in black and white, but I don't, it doesn't speak to me unless the image still has to be really powerful. And a lot of these images are great. And I, but I feel like if you're going to lean into the black and white thing, then you, you should really lean into trying to tell a compelling story with the whole collection. Yeah. And I mean, sometimes it's not even about telling like a compelling story. It might just be about shapes and shadows and light, sure, and it might sure. just look, look nice aesthetically next to each other. Right. And so these yeah. just feel, it just feels like two sort of random black and white shots that you really like. And I think they're both great shots. They just feel just, um, just out of place in, in a collection for me. Um, and so, yeah, I would, I would like, like Dan said, I would have like a greater focus on, um, on the, the curation aspect of storytelling or, or, you know, uh, how they, how they tie into each other. Thing. I don't think I have, um, I, this is something I've been kind of thinking about a little bit um, as I as I think about where work is supposed to go, where it's going to get minted, how it's going to get presented. Um, I've realized that sometimes I look at, at people, people will put a link to some work and I'll go, okay, cool, I'll go look at it. And sometimes if it's, if it's in a collection that doesn't make sense to me, I'm a little more reluctant to purchase the piece of art because of that. Like oh, I, I kind of want, yeah. I want that historical thing. You know, I want it to be part of a collection that that I like the way my piece fits in the collection. Yeah, I mean, if you opened up a pack of cards and like most of them were Pokemon, and then there was like a Spider Man and like something else in there, in all all the card packs were like that. And it, it I mean, it's a weird example, but like, um, <laughs> like what do you, you know, uh, uh, would you would you sort of find it a, in a cohesive way to collect Pokemon that way? You know, probably you know probably not. Um, but this is this is probably the weirdest example I ever gave in it, and I, I might take I might want to take it back. But but um, <laughs> but yeah, think about it just in a collectible type of way too, right? Like people collect, I think people collect into Lost in Transit, my, my series on the ferries, because it it's. It, it feels like that, right? It feels like it, you could probably pull it out of a card pack uh, and you would be able to, wouldn't be able to guess, but you would know that something in there has to do with um, commuters commuting on the ocean, you know, which, you know, makes a, makes a sense to that or Dan's, um, or, or Dan's um, photos from, how do you, how do you call your, your textured, your textured like uh, photos that you shoot down on? The mud crack ones, yeah, it's called uh, regeneration, but yeah, they're yeah. all it's all desert mud cracks. Yeah, so I imagine myself opening up a pack of cards like before NFTs when I was a kid, and I, I, maybe they had a pack of cards that's about textures and maybe I wouldn't be interested in that as a kid, but I'm sure some people would. And you'd open it up and you don't know what you're going to get in that pack, and maybe there's maybe there's two thousand different you know texture cracks, but you get a pack and it only comes in 10, you know? And so it's just thinking about it in a way that makes things feel collectible and cohesive and stuff like that. So, yeah, I think that's the best advice to really give on, uh, on this. And then was there a, we got a description, right? Oh yeah. Like I said, the description was very, very vague. It said a vibrant and lively model depicting aspects of life. Um, and, and that feels sort of like a way of uh, being able to place uh, any type yeah. of black and white in there in the future, and I think um, once you once once the artist has um, an idea of what the story is about, they can write a much better description. And so, with that right. said, I think that's that's the, the best advice we can give on that one. I'm I'm cool to move on if you are. Yeah, yeah, let's do it. Alrighty. So, uh, so next collection is is a thousand hours. 
second departure by uh, Christopher Howell. Uh, um, I'll read the questions after. I just I want to I want to take a look at this, and I, and I remember this work from a long time ago, but it wasn't this collection because I so I guess this is the second departure. I don't know. Maybe maybe it was me and you, Dan, that looked at this work a while ago. Yeah, I don't, I don't, yeah. Yeah, we have we've definitely looked at his work before. I've actually got a couple of these in my collection uh, too. So, okay, um, cool. He, so, he, so I, the the backstory is that he is basically a military helicopter pilot, um, mm -hmm. and so he's got just tons of really cool uh, shots from in the cockpit. Um, and if you look at these, they, you know, you pull them up, pretty much every single one of them has. A, a full description of exactly where he is, what he's doing, that sort of thing. Um, mm -hmm. And I know that I'm pretty sure he's not with us this morning because we, we were actually DMing overnight. Um, um, he lives in Korea right now, so uh, that's where he's serving. Wow. Um, I wonder if he can still get up in these helicopters in Korea and making photos based on feedback and stuff. Yeah, pretty sure that's that's his what he's still doing. Um, Cool. So, so I want to be able to give the most, uh, the best, and most honest feedback on how, um, which ones are, um, which ones are working, um, which ones uh, he could compose differently, what what moments um, are more captivating and have a factor from this. I guess. Um, yeah. What? It, yeah, I didn't mean to interrupt you, Dan. You no, no, something? you're fine. You're fine. So. I think one of the things that is is good to understand. So, I mean, let's look at the description uh, of the collection because I think yeah. you know, it gives a little bit. You know, basically, um, every one of these are one of ones. It's a continuation of his thousand hour series minted on Manifold, um, and it's a growing photo documentary of a Black Hawk pilot. He's an aeromedical evacuation officer for the Army, piloting the UH sixty medevac Black Hawk. He's flown just under a thousand hours. And the idea is that the photos are raw in the moment and capture some of his favorite moments during flight. Each brings you into the cockpit with him. That's kind of the, the vibe. Um, I think if you, do you want to click on his profile? Because I think the other collection is also in Foundation. Yeah. I couldn't find like the original one, but I can find the one where he has the images manipulated. Is this the image? Original? I don't think the original had images. I think there was an original one and then one that has some manipulated. Yeah. Could be I don't wrong. Know if Black Hawk Diaries is the original. I, I wanted to find the original. I was looking for it. Um oh, ours, I think is an is maybe an addition. Let me see which is foundation. Is maybe okay, maybe on the foundation is where some of the originals are. Tech Tech, yeah. owns this one. Yeah, I would say just I'm guessing uh, Black Hawk. I, see, I, I love this one. Yeah, this this perspective is great. Um, yeah. Oh, 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 yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah, I like these perspectives when he's going wide. I really like that. Um, when I go when I go to the collection that he has now, um, especially the top four for me. Um, First of all, I wouldn't have placed like all these like cockpit pictures like right next to each other, like there's the, these these like display pictures. Uh, but when I go in, um, like you're capturing sunsets with this, but I, I I don't know for some reason I want I want I want more of like I want to see more of the inside of the aircraft and the human figure and the landscape. Like if you can compose all of those layers. I think that's what is going to really will really hit for me. And like, if you go down here to some of these, like where they're a bit wider, like this, um, if you had like that that last sunset with a shot like this, with like warm light on the pilot, and you can see the the sunset through one window, and like the like maybe there's something else happening in a window here, a boat, or like clouds, or things filled up. I think the most successful pictures that he's going to be able to create as um, as a, a Black Hawk pilot is going to be when he can push boundaries with composing wide angle shots that can fill different frames 
during beautiful lighting situations and sort of like epic fish landscapes out there where planes flying by and where like the everything just falls into place. Dan, do you do you agree that like yeah. I don't know. Um how do you some of the ones from the original collection are I mean the a lot of the ones from the original collection are stronger than some of the ones here. This one, I think, for me, is the strongest one in this collection. Um, I love the I love the helmet on him. I love that we can see his name on here with the American flag. We can see the whole display and everything like that. Um, I do wish the 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 landscape was like a little bit more, you know, more epic. I mean, I, I'm sure. You know, if you can get up there for a thousand hours, there's got to be a lot of times where you get these golden hour epic, like, like sunsets, you know, and, and I would, I'd stick to these types of perspectives. I mean, obviously challenge other perspectives too, and try to play with reflections and, you know, maybe get close. You can get really close to the helmet and take a picture in his helmet of what's happening in the reflection of the helmet. There's a lot that you can do here. But from what I'm looking at, the ones that works more successfully for me are the wide angle ones that give me like more meat and potatoes of what it's like to be a pilot. With that, I'm going to pass off to you, Dan. Yeah. Well, so I, I, we were fumbling around at the beginning talking about where the, the other series is. They were an edition series that are on OpenSea. And he's got like, like one of them has like 437 copies out there because he did it as a, I think as an open edition. Oh wow! Yeah, and I, I guess I feel the same. Um, when I look at these, I I find that the scenes that have the uh, that have a a person in them are the strongest. That bottom that bottom right hand corner, the one that's already sold, that might be my favorite of the entire set. Yeah, there is something nice about it. Is that you could feel something from this shot. Yeah. You could feel emotion from it. Yeah, I like it because it feels really different than the rest of them, um, and I really, I really like Blue Crossing as well. The one you were you were talking about, mm -hmm. um, Sea Cliffs is is pretty cool too. Um, it's it's kind of interesting that it has the wiper blade in it. <laughs> yeah, kinda... that's I think that's sold too. Ultimately, I think really what it, what I'm when I look at all this work and and I think about what Christopher's doing, I. I appreciate it as kind of a historical body of work. And that being said, what I would probably do, and I think we may have given this feedback last time, would be to do your best to make sure that each, even though we've got these kind of partial cockpits with landscapes outside, the more you can do to have them each have their own space, to, to take up their own space in the series, would be better and so for a good example for me when i look at it is i feel like two miles high and blue crossing they're a little too similar and i um it's kind of like they're basically the same shot one slightly wider angle than the other um with a different outside and i would almost love to see like you know maybe two miles high could be a really interesting up close you know through the windshield with just the you know just the helmet in in view in the background um you you said two you know, miles high yeah 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 like i just think that's an interesting photo and i, I almost want to see like what would it look like if you were using a longer lens and just snagging the, those bright red rocks and the reflection of the uh helmet the, right helmet visor you know something like that it could be interesting just so it changes the framing some. Yeah, I was thinking the same too. I mean, yeah, you can just get yeah, up close portraits of the of the yeah. of the, the mask could be really cool too with the reflections yeah. and stuff. I think there's a lot that can be done. Yeah. yeah. But ultimately, I mean the strength of these is the documentary nature of it, the fact that nobody else shoots these. You know, like that's pretty cool. And it is. I can only get so picky about it because it's like, well, beggars can't be choosers. He might be like, dude, do you have any idea what it takes to take these pictures? I, <laughs> that's yeah, exactly. I, I have no idea what it's like to be in the, but I, I like in this of, one where the where the sunlight's hitting on him too. Like, I would pay attention to like lighting a lot too. Like, yeah. if you if you get like beautifully lit inside the plane and 
you know, gorgeous landscapes on the outside, uh, I think it's, that's where you're really taking it to another dimension because like you're, you're then a landscape and a documentary photographer at the same time in a very niche genre. Well, and I, I'm kind of curious as well. Uh, like, I don't know how limited you are. Like, is this, what kind of camera do you get to use? What, what kind of camera can you bring along in your uniform, you know, in your, in your uh, flight suit? Like, I, don't, I just don't know. So. I don't either. No, it's cool. Um, in terms of the questions he was asking about, um, does a varied price floor uh, deter a varied floor price deter collectors? Should he set the same price for each remaining piece? I am a strong believer that you should have the whole collection should be the same price. Um, that being said, I have series that I've minted on Foundation that have stuff that was minted last year and stuff that was just minted last week. And the prices are not always the same. So it depends on what your intention is. This, to me, feels like an intentional collection. I like the idea of them being the same price. If you're going to have stuff in a series that's maybe not as closely connected, then maybe the variable prices are okay. But I would stick with one price. Yeah. I mean, I do feel like the ones that are priced at 0 0.20 on the top are the weakest images for me. Um, does that mean that they should be a lower price or does that mean that they should be like mixed from the collection to me? Like the way I curate, like I would mix them from the collection. Like I would only want to show like really strong stuff. Like even if this collection only had like four or five pieces in it, I'd rather it be like four or five impactful pieces than, than like some fillers that, um, that are priced lower. Yeah. Well, and he also asked if, so the other one, um, the other collection was, like I said, it's it's additions, and he was asking if not having them be sold out is affecting this current collection. I don't, I don't think so because I don't think that it's, I don't think it's quite clear enough that they're connected, and they're very different. These are one of ones. The other one was, were not one of ones. They were um, additions. So yeah, it's not clear enough that they're connected because we had a hard time finding. So like, um, yeah, I, I think uh, a collector would wouldn't even be might not even be aware that you even had yeah um exactly that's that's how i feel i i like this um this banner though like um i like the 16 by 9 style and i think this is a good way of like utilizing the the real estate of foundations banner it's really cool so yep kudos on that uh i like was there I don't know that i have anything else to add here no, same. And we and you come and you we talked about both of the questions you had or whatever. Yeah, yeah. Great, cool. Um, and I would like to move on to uh, Golden Hour Chronicles by uh, Bon Bon Du Gay. Cool. Um, and I'll just say, um, you know, right off that, like I I really love this collection. Um, I really like these a lot. Um, they're beautiful. Uh, I love how uh, he curated uh, these these golden pieces next to each other, and then more of like the blue hour uh, pieces next to each other. I think they 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 just they just feed really well off of each other. Um, the banner is low resolution. Fix your banner because this collection is really beautiful. So like fix your banner. It's too low resolution. Um, yeah. To be yeah, it's, that's got to be fixed. Uh, description. Um, Golden Hour is truly the most exciting and calming for any nature lover and photographer. The stories of these moments aren't just uh, descriptive, but retrospective uh, and captive of the times I've experienced them, and they keep changing with the phases of life I go through. I've tried to bring together some of the best moments I've captured in this magical period of the day through the years and in a, a phase, in a phase-wise manner, I hope to bring you more over the years. Okay. Um, I mean, I, 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 I like the artist statement. I just, that I hope to bring you more over the years. I, I would probably nix that. It seems like it doesn't seem as confident as it should be. Um, maybe like I'll, I'll continue to bring more over the years, or just me. I, I honestly, I would probably kill that last paragraph because I don't. I, I don't like the I've tried. Yeah. Um, 
and I and I hope I would I would just I think that it's stronger without that last paragraph. True. Any words that that um, feel like um, like uh, like a lack in almost words like try uh, like I'll try I hope I wish are um, they they don't feel very confident in and and your abilities are like really really good so I would be more confident in, in knowing that you're an amazing artist and that you're gonna do those things so like I, I agree with Dan like this last paragraph I think can be um, taken away. Um, I love all these. Um, my favorite is a tale of fire and water. This shot is just beautiful. Uh, I I don't know how to catch a sun uh, a sun when it looks like this. Like I just I haven't studied enough how to do it, and I've turned the exposure down so much on my camera to try to get it, and it still turns out like really white. <laughs> when uh when there's a really wild looking round sun like this but damn like the reflection of the sun on the sand and the textures of the sand and all of that dan i mean i'm sure you like the textures in this one the, and that how do you, oh, yeah. do you like this image <laughs> yeah look that's yeah, beautiful it's the same yeah it's the same thing whenever you get uh because these are super this would be like an interesting it's kind of super high contrast because it's you get that bright sun and then you're trying to capture, you know, detail as well. And yeah, it works really well. I, I just like the, I like the geometric kind of look to it as well. Yeah. I like how the, how the sun illuminates this top portion of the frame and makes a purple like, and it, it juxtaposes like the purple down here. Uh, I really like this shot. I mean, I like them all. Yeah. Um, another one that really stands out to me is, uh, is that first one flight home. Um, just, yeah, just, it's, uh, just, it's very peaceful, very tranquil. Um, I think that you need the bird in the shot. It's like a pretty shot without the bird, but the bird just like adds this other element to the story. Um, you know, there's, you know, there is some at the top, some blown highlight. I don't know that it bothers me that much. Dan, does it bother you or like, would you crop that or? I was literally kind of thinking I would probably crop in a little bit on that one because I like the way that that gradient works, but I feel like it, it's a little bit too bright at the top. And I feel like you do, if you just chopped off and made it more of like a six by seven or four by five, it might four work five. better. If it's not four or five, I think four or five would, would and you can, and you can then you can just pull it down. And then I think it would be like, 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 like the Instagram size, those four or five yeah. size. Mm-hmm. A lot of sense, uh, Dan. You want you, uh, between these two? We want to me to open Golden Hour Blues or Last Light in the Woods. You want to talk about? Yeah, um, yeah. I so I think this is uh, you know uh, Bondu has some really cool work, and I feel like Golden Hour Blues is when I look at it, I am immediately it kind of feels familiar based on his other work. Um, yeah, I think it's a really, it's a really. Really beautiful scene. I like the, I like the tones. I like that the the gradient through the top. Um, I almost, I feel like this one maybe could benefit just just a bit from being maybe just a smidge warmer, um, in terms of editing. But I, but like I said, it looks familiar. It looks like his work. So <laughs> I know how I would edit it. But I, but I like that it looks like his. Um, and I think that the crop works really well for this one. Same. But I see what you mean by like, like the heavy amount of blue in these areas that maybe don't have to be that blue. Um, and add some and a good, good temperature towards warmness. Um, I think I think you're right about that. You, I would also give a different feeling to the water. Feel more, feel more warm. Uh, we didn't look at um, last night in the woods. Want to talk about that one, man, or you want to talk about this one? Yeah, um, I'm, I'm, I'm kind of breaking up a little bit. You're, you're breaking up, and I think it might be my connection. Can you hear me? Okay. I can hear you. Okay. <laughs> yeah. When I, when I look at this one, I think if I, um, I don't know that this one is quite 
to me it feels like this is kind of the weaker piece in in this series and there's a couple reasons why um like i feel like i'm a little too constrained in the image here i want to see more of what's off to the sides um and i and i i feel like i want a little more space for these shadows to play out if that kind of makes sense um it feels a little bit less um less obvious that it's that it's golden hour it doesn't feel like it's is, there's some light there, you know, there's some interesting light happening but i kind of want to see more um, i like that the rest of the images have these sky views and this one feels a little bit out of place among those others yeah let me look at it among the others yeah that makes yeah that makes sense it it, it, it but uh, i feel like it fits in terms of like light color palette I think it could still fit. Um, let me open it up. I see what you mean by like wanting more more space to allow the image to live and and feel more in the um, in the areas of like light and shadow and what's happening. Um, you know, and and sometimes I look at images like this and I want like a, a subject, but I don't know. There's something about this image that I really I really still like uh, without ha without having the rest of the scene. I don't know. It's uh, it feels uh, it feels really calm, quiet, beautiful, and I just I love the I love the texture in the trees, and I love the light and the editing done on this. It feels very fine art. I would love to see like a non cropped version of this if there is one. It feels like it's cropped. But I don't know if this is just shot vertically perfectly in that way. But uh, yeah, I, I like it still. Um, so we read the description, right? We didn't we didn't read any of the descriptions on it. So like, let's open my favorite one, the tale of war. Um so let's read the description here. Coming together of two of the most important elements of life. Fire and water is always a sight to behold. On this particular morning, another two essential component, po components of my life came together, beauty and serenity. Although a public beach this morning, it was just me alone with a stray dog on a vast and beautiful beach. Uh, the night before a vicious storm had gathered above the seas and poured down all night. Hopes weren't high when I picked up my camera bag and I left my room as the clouds were still looming. But in the, bu in the business of landscape photography, you never know when the heavens will open up uh, to a beautiful view. And thank God I did. And That's for cool. one, what's that? That's beautiful. Uh, yeah, I love it. Yeah, yeah. And thank God I did. And for one of, uh, for, one of the only times in my life I witnessed a perfect sunrise. Beautiful, lone, and serene. Really well written, right? Really well written description. Um, what are the questions on this collection? I, um, let me see. Uh, how is the concept of the collection, for the collection? This is also uh, supposed to be a dynamic collection that keeps growing in a phase-wise manner. How are the descriptions for the collection, individual pieces? Um, I like the concept for the collection. Like uh, Dan did have something to, to say about the um, the tree image not being like a sky type uh, image, but um, I think I, I can't. I wouldn't be able to tell cohesively until I saw more within this. And maybe there are going to be more images that are more like that second one. Um, how are the descriptions for a collection and individual pieces? For the for we talked about the description for this we we would nix the last um, the last uh, paragraph there. I'm not going to go and read all of the descriptions on these. I can already tell from a tale of, uh, of fire and water that we are able to write really really great descriptions that kind of uh, bring in a lot of intrigue and uh, open up the imagination for the for the viewer. Do you have anything else to add, Dan? No, I don't think so. I think that's. Uh... No, it, it feels good. And I, I was just going to say exactly what you said. I kind of would almost need to see more to know if the tree one really, if it fits well in the, in the concept. But I like the idea of this kind of golden hour, golden light uh, series. And I, I think it's great. 
yeah, and fix the banner. <laughs> the resolution is too low. Um, cool. Um, move on now to uh, uh, Little Moments uh, by Haysom Ali. And um, he originally, um, he just linked this first photograph, um, but uh, he called it Little Moments in the spreadsheet. So I'm, I'm pulling up both because it's in a collection together. Um, so let's. I don't know, let's first, first I'm going to take a look at the, the original uh, image that's already sold to ETH.co. Um, and, you know, I, I've, I've talked about this image in the past. I think it's really gorgeous. There's a lot of beautiful layers. There's uh, this one little man or woman out there in the yellow amongst blue, which is really beautiful. Um, the peak is gorgeous. Um, yeah, I, I love this shot. Um, oops, I pressed F1. I pressed F1 instead of... Uh, yeah, instead of escape order, I was supposed to press. Um, so, yeah, I don't know much to say about that one. Oh, description here. Little Moments is a collection of one of ones that tell the story of my journey through the beautiful landscapes and wondrous places I knew nothing about. Um, yeah, that's that's good. I mean, you could probably add a little bit more to that, um, personally about you and stuff like that. Uh, do you see me? This is the one I really was submitting for. Um, I, you know, I, I really, I really dig this shot. Um, feels, you know, it's got an epic feel to it. I do like the high contrast. You know, I like the sil the silhouetted portion of the image, the figure. Um, you know, uh, the then the just you know, there's just this kind of like golden hour light on these really sharp and beautiful peaks of this monstrous rock and then the dramatic sky that feels like a storm sky uh, I, I love the shot the only thing that um i think could have been different if this if this is a, a friend of yours and they were there um it feels like they're looking at their phone and that's the only thing for me that takes away from it a little bit uh but if you don't if you didn't know them and they were just on their phone for all there's really nothing you can do about that i mean that aside i think it's still a gorgeous uh gorgeous image um as a landscape photographer I'd love to hear from you dan on that shot oh i i think it's i mean two things it's it's really beautiful <laughs> and i the the when i'm looking at the sky and the mountain next to each other that's the part that's especially interesting i to get that kind of light, but have the sky be that dark, um, is yeah, how <laughs> really cool. Yeah, I because normally if you're going to get something that looked like that, you you know the mountain would be blown out to get the sky to be right or vice versa, and then it's obviously like a a section of light that's hitting at the right moment because you know it's it's really strong directional light, but it's interesting that it's not on the foreground and. It makes it just makes for a really interesting visual presentation. The with these with this light bright section right through the middle with these dark you know bookended by these dark sections. I like it. Yeah, that's great. The three layers of like yeah, dark gold well, look and at light. The, look at the description on this one too. Um, it it's it's an interesting. I I, I like it. I was kind of wanting to see where he would go with this. Yeah, I, I read the description uh, before. Not, I didn't read it yet during this. Do you see me, right? Uh, the name of it. And then, uh, would you notice me in the darkest of hours? Would you notice you on the brightest of days? They say that there's light at the end of every tunnel. Uh, but what if that's wrong? Maybe there's no light at the end and you just have to light it up yourself. Uh, you just have to pick up the shovel and start digging. Maybe you'll find China at the opposite end. Maybe you won't know. Um, I'm sorry. Maybe, uh, maybe you won't. Maybe you won't. <laughs> Who knows? But uh, one thing is for sure: you got to learn to take care of you. There's no knight in shining armor yielding his sword. There's no Iron Man uh, with a robo suit or a Batman with a Batmobile. It's you against all odds, and I know you've got this. I like that a lot. I like that. Right. Uh, it's kind of cool, and I I think it almost plays into like that the guy's standing there looking at his phone trying to figure things out, you know? Um, yeah, that makes sense. 
Some, something works there for me uh, in it. There is something to the figure with the head down that's really great, and it's not the common sort of like a uh, guy with his hands up, <laughs> like right. with, a, with, a, with a landscape in front of him or just looking out at it. There is something beautiful about the way that the way that it's silhouettes like that. I think yeah. this is a killer. I think this is a killer piece and I think this is going to sell. Um, I think uh, the price is right. Um, 0 0.45 reserve, I think uh, is really good. And I think it's going to sell. I think it's just going to take time. You know, if ETH.co like this, yeah. I'm sure he's going to like this, you know? Um, yeah, yeah. The question, was it questions? Uh, let's see. There, okay, little moments. What do you think of the title? Um, I like it. It fits, it fits because the, the people are little in, 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 in the grand landscape. I, I, I think it works, right? Um. Any suggestions on the description? Yeah, I would elaborate a bit more on this description. It's not much of a description. Um, yeah, um, you know, why, why the, uh, do you do enjoy hiking? Um, what the does it feel? The description okay. on the individual piece. The descriptions on the oh, individual great. piece. Are great. Good. Yeah, yeah they're great. But, the, but you could use a little more description on the collection. Exactly. Like maybe you can talk about hiking, you know, what it's like to get up to some of these summits and the journey. Um, uh, does this image go well with the previously minted NFT? I think it fits. I think it, I think it works. Yeah. I think they're both like minimal landscapes with us, with the subject. Yeah. And that's the only, that's the only questions. So um, I can move on to the next collection. You only really have to talk about one image there. So, um, I've seen this collection and I've reviewed it before, but I figured I would review it again because I think I don't remember the prices being 0 0.09 for one of one. Maybe they changed the price. I don't know, but um, this is by the Children of the Far City by Halleck. Uh, have you reviewed this collection? Um, no, Dan? This, this one's not familiar to me. Cool. So I'd like to hear more about what you have to say, even than what I have to say, but I'll, I'll say a bit. Um, so the description, children of refugee families uh, fleeing the immortality in their own country. It doesn't matter much to the kid, but when he grows up, um, you know, I, I probably wouldn't use like a gender for that. I mean, but when they grow up, maybe uh, children of refugee families fleeing the immortality in their own country. I mean, it doesn't matter. I mean, that's a bold statement too. It's almost like putting, it's almost like telling people how their own emotions are. And just because they're a kid, it doesn't matter. I don't actually like this part. Um, so I would, I would probably just children of refugee families feeding immortality in their own country. Um, space, um, next paragraph, like um, I was able to capture these pictures and make a connection with these people because, or, um, I have access to this space and I like photographing in this place because, or something like some more stuff here, but, um, yeah, on the description, uh, and the things, uh, it's cool. Uh, Sloika collection. Great to look at. Um, he has the Twitter, Instagram. I don't even know what this is. Let me click this. Oh, it's 500 oh. PX. Yeah. I used to call it 500 PX. But I heard someone call it 500 pics, and that made more sense to me, like pics, like pictures. <laughs> oh, yeah. So maybe that's – so it might be 500 pics. Um, so, um, yeah, if anybody doesn't know, 500 uh, PX or pics is actually uh, Ev from Sloika's uh, uh, photographic uh, website or sharing site before – uh, Sloika, but it's the Web 2 one that competed with, and I think was better than Flickr. Um, but anyway, uh, let's take a look through some of the images here. Um, you know, there's uh, a couple images that stand out to me. Um, goat and boy, I think is the best image in the collection. Um, because one, we have a beautiful triangular composition between this, uh, this styrofoam cooler, it looks like. 
the goat, the styrofoam cooler, um, the boy who's like in really dirty pajamas. And it's sort of sad, but um, these beautiful big eyes, uh, beautiful hair, just a really, really beautiful child looking into the, looking into the camera um, in a really innocent and beautiful way. Uh, and I love the tonality of this image. Um, I feel, you know, you know, this shot too, I think is, is a really powerful one too, because we also kind of have like this, not triangular, but like this circular composition. That's really yeah. interesting, right? It's just like a circular composition and everyone is really interesting in this. Even the kid who's blocked by the mirror is interesting because his head is a mirror. Um, the kid in the background, the girl, this girl back here has her hands on the face. This kid's looking, she's playing with the dog. I like that you could see the movement, that the shutter speed was enough to see the movement, but it's still on the house in the background. So we know that you held the camera steady enough to, to make this. And I think it's a really great uh, um, intentional choice. It feels, it might not be intentional, but it feels intentional. Um, so like those two shots for me were the ones that felt strongest. Like even, um, even game and car. Um, I mean, I'd like to be, I, I, I'd like to see like maybe, um, the exposure punched up a little bit in this, like not, not back here in the highlight areas, but like inside the car, like maybe the, I'd like to see a little more clarity on the dash, a little more clarity on the seats. Um, I'd love to see the faces a little bit better. I love the feet hanging down. Um, and you know, the rest of the images for me feel like they lack, um, they feel gray, um, COVID days in snow, um especially they feel very gray and they don't feel as contrasty and as um as punchy as i like uh as i like my print to feel with that said dan um any of your favorites uh, anything you agree disagree with before we talk about pricing and anything else here in this collection yeah um i think <laughs> dogs are barking <laughs> so, so, um it's cool when I, looking at this, I think the biggest, I'm thinking the same thing. It feels like it's just a little, the overall, uh, the overall vibe is kind of muddy um, in terms of um, the color processing. And I especially say that because I've been, while we've been talking and looking at this, I've been off looking at his other work on OpenSea. And I, uh. I feel like these just, they don't quite hold up to what, the rest of his work looks like let's um, check it out let's let's check out his instagram well even these black and whites don't have a muddy feel like look how sharp this is and um yeah. at the cl and clarity clarity wise even this is wow this is beautiful this shot wow um i think i think it does a lot of color too as far as i know but i well, so I mean, a good example, like I know that it's not the same, but if you look at the like third one down on the on the left, there's a little oh, girl with a kitten. Uh, okay. Oh, third. Oh, up here, third one down on the left. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I love this shot. I see. I see this in another collection on OpenSea. Isn't this? That's the same girl, isn't it? Oh, it is the same girl because it's the same sweater. Yeah. Yeah. It's to me. Same the quality of light, the contrast, the clarity of this image is, this is really good. Um, and black I, and white I really works, work, black and white works really well in, in those midday hours. It doesn't look as good on, on those foggy days with portraits, I don't think, as it, as it looks when you have those midday um, noon lighting like this, you know? Yeah. I, so I, I feel like there's just a lot of... Um, he has a really good sense, even just the, the very top image on in the, the first image. Look at that one. This one that I pulled up before? Yeah. There's so much going on here, but that guy is making eye contact, and yeah. this feels like, a, it almost feels like a painting. Like, there's something about it that um, I would almost like to see it, like, vertical. Yeah, look at this little story of these two guys here, though, too. Uh-huh. Having a conversation, and 
the one guy's watching them, and then there's these two girls on the other side talking. I just it's really interesting, and it's you mean, well. Do you mean like this? Cool. Like look at like 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 this is cool too. Is this what you meant by vertical? Because like, I feel like that's a cool composition too, like that. Yeah, um, yeah, that can I mean, be cool. We, we lose some depth in that though, but the depth of that long the the long depth makes makes us sort of work uh, with those uh, buildings in the background. But yeah, yeah. I, I guess kind of what I'm getting at is. To me, the the Sloika series, I don't mean to be too critical here or tell you that it's not good work because, I mean, I think these are good photos. I just don't think that they're as high quality as, um, as what you have in your Instagram. And here's maybe, if I'm going to be critical, I think this is, it's, a, it's really a curation question because you have a bunch of really great work. And what I'm seeing is I don't know that you curated the Sloika collection very well. I think you kind of you were forcing a a collection of images that I don't know that are, I just don't know that they're very powerful together. And when I go through, there's so many great images on your Instagram account that that are really that really have interesting stories that make you think they're really compelling. I feel like I could go on his Instagram and grab six. Months images oh, yeah. that that would fit really well and make a collection in like a right yeah. now yeah. Um, yeah and some people I, just need that you know some people just need that like some people are like artists at heart and like they're they're like they're photographers at heart but like they don't they didn't necessarily have the tools to like learn how to curate and stuff like luckily i went to like art school and curation was like a huge process of it like and, and Learning curation is a, is a sophisticated art. Like it's a whole new art in itself. Um, and so, yeah, um, yeah. I think there's just I think like I said, I think this year is going to be a big year in curation, um, with a lot of like these these foundation world galleries and and curators that want to curate. And I would love to curate this year for sure. Um, and um, like I said, you know, I think I just think some artists got to network with some of the people that are curating really good things and say hey take a look at some of my work and like what do you think um like we put something together you know like you know even you know even you know big you know big players like and 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 curators like you know like chakai and like monolith gallery like you know like maybe if you you, you show them like your your body of work as a whole of like a black and white and said like hey like i'm a i'm you know i'm a photographer but I, i'm not necessarily um best at curating my work like what do you see here you know like or just anyone in general like that that you can network with that, that curates that can help um yeah. i think a good step is being in the ama and like hearing this but like yeah. uh yeah the next step is figuring out what are your best images and do they work together in a story right and, and how how you how are you going to line that up in a story yeah well it's interesting he also in his link tree has a link to a color instagram account too and i don't think it's quite as powerful as the as the black and white does. Uh, oh in the link tree yeah Unfortunately, I can't click on the link here on his Instagram here, but I'm sure you can on his uh, Twitter. Oh, that's if I wanted to read out. Um, oh, here. It's good. I just I just don't find it quite as compelling. I think the black and white. He's just got a great body of work on the black and white stuff. Instagram too. Yeah. Yeah, that that might have worked better in black and white. This definitely has to be in color. I like that shot. Yeah, not to say that there's not some good shots in here. I just think there's something yeah, that's, about that's it. Uh, yeah, I mean, I think he works well in black and white and color. But uh, either way, yeah, kind of what we're at here is I think that the the Sloika for me is just it kind of it miss it misses a little bit and i think it's a curation error that's my personal take it they just they don't it's not that they're not interesting it's that they're not you have better shots 
and I, yeah. I know you were you were aiming for the kid vibe that it was the, the kid theme but i just don't think it works very well i just don't think that that's the best thing he shot over time exactly maybe exactly. maybe he hasn't spent enough time there and it makes sense as a, as a, as a story they're also, they're also not the the conditions are not very interesting in these photos i think that's why they're kind of it's kind of gray and kind of washed out and you've clearly you got so many shots in like really dramatic light in the other in your uh, in your larger body work i would go there yeah this is like this is really poor lighting in this shot like even bringing up exposure would like you know it's it's tough um yeah well, i think that's about that's about the feedback i've got for that one yeah me too i mean i've i've covered this collection a few times actually so um yeah so i think that's that works out really well um one one more yeah it's a bigger one it's the biggest collection yeah and it's um uh it's iceland glacier tales and this is by uh it's by uh, gulame g-u-i-l-l-a-u-m-e gulame i don't know how you say that exactly um but let's take a look at the description I moved from France to Iceland, uh, where we were living in a small town at the foot of Iceland's largest ice cap, uh, Vatnajökull. We had incredible view and access to some of the outlet glaciers. Needless to say, I got curious to explore the glaciers. I spent days exploring with exploring uh, the remote areas of the glaciers. With the fast changing and receding glaciers, I quickly realized that. These were places I could only enjoy for a short time, and I needed to immortalize those places with my camera. Cool. Um, pretty good artist statement. I don't really have that much to say about that. It's, it's pretty well written. I mean, um, not that it's poetic or anything, but it's, um, you know, it's, it's talking about what you want to capture. Yeah, that's good. And I would yeah. say he's, uh, he's French, so I'm guessing that would be pronounced Guillaume. There you go. Uh, <laughs> I love the banner on it. This is really good use of 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 foundation's ability to make something beautiful. Fantastic yeah. banner. Uh, everyone mm -hmm. should take note of that banner and really cool image that he ha that you have here. This is really well done. Um, now, time to be uh, like without going into the images because there's some images that I really really like. But um, I'm going to start by giving some constructive uh, feedback. There's just too many images uh, for me. Collection of 26, there's too many images that are just not as good as similar images that are better than those. Um, there are some images in here that feel like they are lacking a subject where you could have put the subject in there, and there's some images where maybe it didn't need the subject. Um, let's let's take a look. Well, light seekers, let's take a look at this. Um, this is really cool. I feel like this is an image that sort of needed a subject. I love the yellow jacket. I love the textures in this. One thing I'm going to say, uh, you know, man, man, look at this though too. A little light shining off of here. This reminds me of the movie Alien. This is wild. Uh, one thing I'm going to say, it, uh, technically, blown out highlights in most of the images. Like, um, this is really blown out. Like, there's no information here. There's no information back here. Um, I wish the information was there. Um, there's, right. there's, there's even no information here. Now, Dan, this is where I'm going to hand it to you while we're just looking at this shot. Um, how do you shoot this without blowing out those highlights? Um, you just expose for um, the highlights, right? And I then pull up the well, shadows because it's digital, right? Yeah. There's, I mean, there's a couple things to think about with something like this. Um, HDR, you know, bracketing. Yeah, you, you could do it as you could bracket it. Um, it also depends on what camera you're shooting on. Um, if you're shooting on a, you know, modern uh, mirrorless, you know, camera, any of the any of the modern mirrorless cameras are gonna probably be able to pull back some of the highlights. Uh, but I, I would probably think in a shot like this, you, you kind of, you'd want to really exposed for the highlights um because on a mo on a on a modern camera and i would say anything by sony nikon 
Fuji. Um, and, you can pull and those shadows up nicely. You can pull those shadows up. The shadows will be recoverable. Um, the other thing, a, a shot like this, and I know this, this is getting into something different. It might not be a bad idea to think about um, exposing for the highlights and then just busting out a, a, some kind of a low-level LED or something like that for the interior. That's a great idea. Yeah. That's probably what I would do here. Um, um, or um, some, something like that. You could even probably use your phone, <laughs> the light on your phone to light up yeah. the inside. Just to give it a little bit extra. Um, but you're love, right. Love I, that. I think one of the things that is that throughout the collection, that's the one thing that's a little bit distracting for me is I feel like I'm I'm getting a little too much blown highlights. Yeah, absolutely. I agree. I mean, and I think like, I think this is like a powerful one to like portal. Um, and it's just the highlights. It's heavy. It's heavy on the high. It's heavy on the blown highlight. Um, I don't know if it matters as much as in this image, but it's like I, the water. Like I, I, I think there's probably even more water here that could be seen and that could really make the image even better. Um, Go back. There's, oops. Yeah, that's kind of my gut as well. Is that I feel like one of the things that is a a good indicator is that the interior feels really well exposed. So I think you probably had some extra room that you could have exposed. You could have chosen the outside as the exposure, and then pulled up the shadows. That's that's kind of my gut when I look at these. Like, look at this, dude. Like, look at the top portion of this image. It looks like bubble, like a bubble bath. This is this is wild. I love this image, but this could be an epic image if the if 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 the highlights weren't blown. You have no detail in the water here. All your detail is missing, and she has a headlamp on too. Like, like I would have saw. I I I hope you took more than one shot of this shot. I love this shot, and I really like. I would personally bracket these shots, uh, this outdoor shot like this. I would, I would shoot, you know, like, like, I'd probably shoot like um, five shots. I'd probably shoot like one, uh, like one shot negative, negative two exposure, one at negative one, one at the correct exposure according to whatever the camera thing. One, you know, you, you can merge. But I mean, I would, I would, I. The thing that I'd really probably do here is just I would take multiple shots exposing for the highlights and and yeah. and recover and recover that shadow detail because I just I can only imagine because I really like the shot as it is but I can only imagine how much better it is if if there wasn't the that that white that where my eye goes to I want to go to, I want my eye to go to uh, the woman with the oh, the man with the headlamp you know I think I, I think I just found my favorite one um, it's What's called that? look look at it's called look at this one. And it's it has the woman with the orange jacket with a dog. Yeah, I remember. Uh, I remember. I remember the name because I really liked it too. Yeah, so good. Okay, so here's why this one works. First of all, the exposure is pretty good across the image. It's a little bit blown out right in the middle, but that's totally you know it works because look at how clean and uh, crisp the details are in the reflection and in that that water. Uh, tower structure thing the ice the ice oh, pillar yeah. and then mm -hmm. this, this pillar and the ceiling and then look at the re all the reflections of the orange jacket orange yeah look at that boom boom that's one two three four that's like five six there's a bunch of different reflections in there love this image yeah. too i really like this one um it's great i think i think you're right mike the, really what we've got here is there are a few of these and in some cases being blown out's not a big deal. Um, I think it. I think it can work. Like the one you mentioned, the portal. Like to me, I think that one's probably fine. Um, you could you could still pull the highlights down a little bit. But this one, but this one, it's it doesn't work. This right. is way too blown. Out. And this is an epic. Like it looks like a wave. You know, like I I really want this one to work. Like I I just I, I really do. It's just man, all, all the lost detail throughout all the water. Um, and then just the white, the white is, the white is whiter than the outside of the photograph out here. Yeah. It's actually, it's actually whiter. So it's, yeah. it's, that's, so that's something, that, the biggest lesson here, right? Yeah. So that's the overall, that's kind of my overall feedback is I think, like you mentioned, there's a lot of images here. I think there's too many. Um, 
to me, um, somewhere in the neighborhood, I, I mean, this sounds harsh because it's 26, but like, I think maybe 10 would be about the most I would do. Sure. Um, and maybe even, or maybe 12, maybe you can pull, maybe you could pull off 12. So about half of these could go. And part of that is that you've got a few that are dupl kind of duplicates. They feel like they're, it's the same thing, but shot from different focal lengths or slightly different angles. And I would like, I don't know that I want to see, I don't know that I want to see the tunnel more than once without a person in it. Um, yeah, I agree. And, and then there's a few, I like the, some of the wider angle shots are kind of interesting. Um, the bigger picture, that's kind of cool. Um, bigger picture. I'm looking for that now. Is a wide angle the, one you said? Well, it's on the left side there. Go down one more. Yeah, yeah. Here we go. That's kind of cool because it gives you the the overall scene. You see the little tiny the people it's in there. Three people down here. Yeah. Yeah, and so that's 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 pretty cool. Um, yeah, I think this is one of where I'm I maybe being a little critical here of the overall thing here, but I think it's not once again it's one of these curation questions. Um, there's a lot of images here, and while they may mean a lot to you as a photographer, I don't know that they all work in telling a compelling story. And there's a few of them that just have some technical issues that maybe mean that they're not a good fit. Yeah, like something like this to me, like just like misses the mark on um, a figure in the image. Um, it's just the the posture just for me doesn't work here. Um, yeah, well, it, could, it could even work if you thought about. Yeah, maybe if you have another another picture of the person there, but maybe cropping in a little bit more, so there's less mm -hmm. of the of the sky. Um, yeah, the skies are very white. Um, you know, this this shot too. Like, I get you're trying to be artistic with it, but this you sh this one just doesn't work for me either. There's like a way of framing within a frame, but I just don't think that what you framed fits this sort of keyhole um, opening that you've made here. I think it would have to be like, if, if you if you were framing like on the other side of this was like a river leading out into like a home on a, like on a war or something, maybe it would work, but like, um, it's just like a, a framed image of, of a, just, a, you know, a structured mountain. It's not simple enough. It's not minimal enough to be minimalistic and it's not, um, yeah. So let's let's get into um, questions on this one. Um, so uh, he had asked, um, "Is not having a sale for six months an indicator the collection won't succeed?" Um, I'm patient but very busy in my in real life work. So having my photography on the blockchain is a way for me to share my portfolio. Kind of. I'm thinking on building a website to share more of my unminted work alongside the minted one. And then I'm thinking about delisting some pieces and keep the most iconic one. Is that a good idea? Maybe relist some of them as, a, as limited editions. I'm not sure how to qualify the collection as a whole because it mixes landscape, documentary, and storytelling. What are your thoughts on that? Um, well, I'll, I'll address, I think we've kind of addressed what we feel like is maybe a little bit weak with the overall collection. Um, th there's some technical issues, but I think there's also a curation issue. And, and so I think that that's something to revisit. Um, I, what I don't know, Guillaume, is I'm new to your work. I don't know how well you've uh, managed to share this work. I don't understand your collector client base, what, what, you're, you know, what you've shared before. Uh, we can dig in a little bit more on that, but that has a lot to do with whether it's successful or not. Um, but that being said, as a photographer, I'm looking at these and I'm thinking, okay, I want to be, I probably would be more careful about how I curate it. I feel like this is kind of every photo you have from this location. And I feel like that's, you know, it really should be less than half of what you've put up here. And I think you need to be even more critical when you do your editing. That's, I think, one of the big things. In terms yeah, of I mean, delisting, oh, in terms of delisting and keeping iconic ones, I think that's maybe a really good idea. But you, you can also think about, you know, do you want to reframe how you're telling this, what, what you're doing with this? Yeah, absolutely. I, you know, the biggest thing for curation for me 
is that we have a lot of these, uh, a lot of these similar ones. Let's look, is it, uh, I'll start, I think it starts to begin here. Um, is it safe to walk there um, behind the corner? Uh, sh uh, sh stranger ice things, lost arch, going through. Um, those are all like very similar. So like, what are, what are the strongest ones? I mean, let's like, I mean, you think the strongest ones are the ones that have a 0 0.6 reserve. That's clear to me. Um, and they might be, let's take a look like 0 0.3. So you're saying this is half the worth of, of, of some of these. So, and, and maybe it is because this, these have a subject. So let's see, um, going through, I'm trying to make an easy way for you to secure it. So, um, this has a strong storytelling element to it for me. I mean, we already talked about blown highlights and there's a lot blown out here, but it's going to be that way. And a lot of the ones that we're going to compare, um, but outside of that, um, I love the way it's framed. Uh, it's framed really beautiful. I love the geometry of it. Um, I love the, the, the frame within a frame. Um, and I like the story. I like, I like, um, I like the, the figure just in mid step with the dog on the outside, walking towards more of this blue sort of puddle or whatever this is here. Yeah. We take, right. And we take that and then we go to look at something similar that doesn't have a figure. Not that things have to have a figure, but you take a look at this, it's like, you know, there's just not really much for me to create a story out of. I don't know that this foreground here that's out of focus, like, makes any sense to this composition. Um, so, like, for me, I, I, I'd clearly remove that one and I would keep the other one. Um, there's another one that's very similar. Is it safe to walk, uh, to walk there? So... For me, I, you know, um, the thing I like about this shot is that they're both, that he, he's, that he or she's hunched down and looking through and it, it kind of looks like they feel like, is it safe to walk there? But is this better than, than the other figure with the dog one? I don't think so. So um, for me, I could eliminate two already just looking there. Uh, then we have um, Stranger Eyes things. Um, and this is like a shot like similar to the other without the figure. I would personally, the foreground is, is nothing uh, to, to take too much interest from. It, it, it takes a lot of, uh, um, takes up a lot of real estate in the frame and it's not that interesting. It doesn't lead into anything. Um, there's nothing going on through here. And um, uh, that would be another one. I would remove that. Uh, so, you know, and then there's, there's, you know, I, I could go through more of those, but I, I'm not going to go through all of yeah. those, right? So then there's the, the orange jacket. The woman in the orange jacket, the man in the orange jacket, the figure, the good, good girl, uh, whatever. Uh, man or woman in the orange jacket. There's a lot of these. One, two, three, four. Um, you know, that's different. So, you know, this one's really cool portal. So I wouldn't include that in there. But like, which one is it? You know, um, so pointing the right way and take uh, take a look at this one. You got to choose between these two. I would say if 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 you have. I'm not telling you what you have to do, but uh, from a curation standpoint, what I would do is choose between yeah. the two. So um, pointing the right way, um, I don't know, it's a little posy for me. It feels like um, the photographer is like, hey, point up this way, and then she points up that way. It doesn't, this one doesn't work for me. The one that does work for me is the one that Dan liked. Um, take a look at this one, and I like this one a lot too when I was studying the artist here. This, is, this feels a lot more... It feels a little, it feels a lot less posed. It feels more in the moment. You can see the dog, the reflections down here, the reflections up here. Keep this one, drop the other one. Like, it, I mean, you can see where I'm going with this. It's like, um, you know, just find the ones that are similar and and just, just take the best ones. And I mean, it looks like by the way you priced it from 0 0.15, which I think these are the weakest ones, 0 0.15, I do um uh, down to um you know over you know over half of an ETH 0 0.6 ETH um you know I think I think you know in a way which which are some of some of the best ones here. So I, I think I think you gotta you go in and you um you bring this collection down from 26 to 12 or 10. Dan suggested a good number there. I like that number. Uh, 
once again, I want to say though, you know, amazing job on the on the on the 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 the, uh, the, uh, the the border here. Is that what, uh, I'm throwing a blank border? Is that what this is called? Uh, no, this is called. The, uh... <laughs> not, not the border, the banner, banner. Jesus, the banner. the banner here, fantastic banner. Like I tell people all the time, foundation is great for creating a beautiful looking layout. Use it to your advantage, guys. Everybody who's watching this that has a low resolution banner that has a banner where the the image is cut off halfway, you know, figure out a way there's apps that can slice images like this or figure out a way to, to make yours feel like a like a, a fully polished and beautiful website. And um, the artist did a great, great job at that. And just, just a curation thing here. So um, yeah, that's what I got. I, 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 I curate this down into the best, the best of the best images. I mean, I'm very strict though. I'd probably curate this down to eight images. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, you know, and, and the top, 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 the top images, let, I'd let that sell out. I'd let the work speak for itself. And then if you if you have a, if you have more, then you go to go into part two after you revisit the place or or, or whatever it might be. Anything yeah. else for me, Dan? You know, I, I think uh, we're on the same page here. Um, when I I went and looked around a little bit, um, I, I don't there's not a whole lot other of other work that's minted outside of this. Some some other stuff that's kind of similar. Um, but when I and I did pull up his Instagram account and. Lo and behold, there's a whole bunch of really great stuff in the Instagram account. <laughs> so I'm we're we're I just feel like this is yet another one of those conversations about looking for things. What that, the hell? Look at this shot. Look at this. Yep. <laughs> that might be the best one in that collection if it was in there. Yeah, yeah. There's another one that's only the cave. It's on the right hand side a ways down. That one's pretty good, but then there's one that's a few more down below that that it, that's kind of epic. Oh, oh wow, right is there. it this? Yeah. Whoa. <laughs> Where's this? Where's this, my guy? <laughs> really yeah, good. So, so we said all those things, and yet here we are looking, and... That's a frame within a frame, right? Look at this one. Yep, yep. Sorry, Dan, uh, go ahead. Th well, there's also, there's, a, there's, a, there's three or four other ones here, and so I just, I feel like... You have curated a uh, a collection that's all from the same trip, and I think that's the mistake. I think you have a whole ice bunch cave. of other oh. ice cave work that should be included in your ice cave collection, and that's how what I would do. I would go back and I'd really seriously rethink what you've included, and go back through your portfolio and oh, you've got there's a there's a beautiful one in here, kind of right above. See the one with the. Um, Right in the middle on the top there, what you have up. Go down um, a couple more. Go down a couple more. One more. That one right there. We talked about Whoa. the idea. Of having, see, the this, this one is not blown out. Beautiful. Um, and oh, this, and look, if you look at the, um, look at his description, um, this is an exposure stack. So he bracketed this one. Yeah, so so my question is then why are you why are you immortalizing the ones that you put less effort into? Yeah. With the, so, the risk of that, you know what I'm saying? Like just yeah, re, yeah, yeah. You know, burn burn so, burn them. Burn the ones that giving, you, you know. Yeah. So Guillaume, if I'm if I'm trying to give you I'm trying to give you the uh, the good feedback here, it's that you have a bunch of really great work. Um but a lot of the stuff that's in that collection, it's just it's not as high quality as what you of your other stuff out here. And I know you're trying to curate for a specific reason and around a trip, but I think that, that that's hurting you because you've got a lot of better work from other trips that would that would work really well um, if you if you curated them together. Absolutely. Um, I can't say it any better. Um, you don't have to curate things around a trip you don't have to curate things around black and white um curate things like just curate your best stuff that fits into the story you know like um there's so many glacier works on here that are so cool that like if they if all the best ones were put together I, I, like i would be so surprised to see i mean even this fits into some of the glacier stuff maybe i mean the colors do at least yeah. like yeah it's glacier glacier lake like 
I want to see that in a collection with something like, look at this wall. Like, there's so much on here that you could put a mind-blowing landscape collection together that's so good that you probably will get sales without even the marketing just because foundation is so popular right now. Um, I that, think if I were to just like, here, go ahead. The, um, go to the top and then look at the fourth one down in the middle. That's, I love that's it. the shot. That's the and, best. And, yeah. And to me, that should be the anchor for ice caves. Damn, man. I want to go to an ice cave now. It reminds me of the movie Alien. It's so yeah, yeah. wild. Like, so, I, I, and I think this, this kind of allows us to kind of end on a positive note here. I mean, I, as much as we can be a little harsh with the, with the collection that he submitted, I, I think the, the criticism is not on your photography. You're a good photographer. You've got a good eye. You've, you put yourself in amazing situations. I just think it, it really is a curation thing. Um, I really, I, it, is the artist here? Oh yeah, they are here. That's cool. Um, maybe we could hear from the artist. Um, if Goon is around, um, can you unmute uh, Guillaume? Guillaume, we can hear. Guillaume, Guillaume, I'm sorry. Guillaume. Um, and if not, um, and if not, that's fine. But I'd love, I'd, I'd love to hear. Uh, I'd love to hear uh, what they have to say, whether it be on Twitter through text or DM me or whatnot. I think you. Uh, You've got some work out of you where you could put something together that's super epic. Um, other than that, though, I don't have anything else on that collection. That's actually the last collection of the day. I thought this was a really awesome session, Dan. Yeah, I really enjoyed this. It was great. Right? Yeah. It was, uh, oh, he's working on um, there. Jaden's working on I think that's Jaden. Yeah. If, 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 I mean, if the artist wants to speak. I haven't read this channel. I'm reading it. So. Well, it looks like if he's, he's maybe not wanting to talk, so that's okay. Um, yeah, that's totally fine. Um, I thought this, this session was awesome today, though. Um, there was some amazing work. Um, Amazing points from you, Dan. Um, you know, it's great to have you, especially when talking about landscape too. Because I, I mean, I don't really, I don't really know as much about landscape. But well, I'll tell you what. This makes me wish I could go. I, I've never been to Iceland. I want to go there and check all this stuff out. This <laughs> stuff looks amazing. Real, real. But just yeah, all the collections though. Some really great work. Um, you know, thank all you guys for being here. Thanks, Dan, for oh, for looks your like time. He's Oh. He's, he just com he just commented, Mike. Um, oh, okay. I'd love to bring my view on things. I can I unmute myself? Yeah. Um, oh, can't unmute myself. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Gohan. I don't think any of us have the ability to un to unmute him, unfortunately. No, I, I think um I think Jaden is uh working. I think she has to change his permissions, and then we could hear from the office because we'd love to hear from it because I think we gave some like banging feedback that can really him put together like an amazing, amazing, amazing collection. <clears throat> The girl popping in and out. Okay, good. Well, he likes the feedback either way, so that's good. Yeah. Well, I think, um, yeah. I mean, I think that's that's maybe a good place to kind of wrap things up then, if he's not able to speak. Um, yeah, overall, totally. Overall, what we're seeing a lot of great, a lot of really great work today. Um, and if if I could say anything, it's just that I, I feel like every one of us needs to get better at really thinking through how we how we do things and, and how we curate our own work and and that sort of thing. Yeah, absolutely. Um I see I see Jaden said uh, tried with you and told me it didn't work. 
if you want, I can keep the Twitter space going and maybe head there to finish up. I'm not able to speak, unfortunately. Um, yeah, I mean, I'm not in Twitter space currently, but um, yeah, I mean, I'll, I'll jump into the Twitter space. Uh, I don't know if Dan has time, but I mean, I mean, I'll jump into the Twitter space if you want to. Oh, someone's on. He's he's actually on. <laughs> What's up, bro? <laughs> nice to see you. I know. Okay, fine. Um, I'll jump into the Twitter. I'll jump into the Twitter space. I can do the same. Yeah, yeah I'm doing that now. I want to hear from you. So <laughs> let's do it. Uh, with that though, I'm gonna press. I'm gonna press end on the uh, on this here. Um, but awesome. Love the AMA today. Thank you so much, Dan. Thanks everybody for being here. And meet us over on the. Tw meet us over on the Twitter side.